good evening everyone all honorable guests including today's chairperson additional chairperson keynote speakers entire team of inspire research association and team of cimp and majority of learned participants from all over the country and abroad who have joined the program i heartily welcome you all on the second day's session on research and innovations in education humanities and social sciences as you all know that we have all enriched on inaugural day of the international conference on multidisciplinary research and innovations in finance and strategic management business economics education humanities and social sciences and we have listened to professor ajay kumar singh who was the chief guest professor rana singh professor ss modi professor rajiv ranjan dr dean pasture from philippines professor manvinder singh pawa professor dak suranga silva professor mamta jain dr aarti chopra and number of participants from all over the country and abroad on behalf of inspira research association and chandragupt institute of management patna i heartily welcome our today's chairperson dr professor chai ching ten from thailand additional chairperson professor anil mehta and keynote speakers uh, ms ankleda lulas and dr ml vasita now i would like to welcome and invite professor chai ching ten our today's chairperson of technical session before inviting professor chai ching ten i want to uh, give some brief about professor ten dr ten is a registered engineer with institute of engineering australia and iso 9001 lead auditor dr ten's original engineering training was with the university of wisconsin usa under us naval research project scholarship focusing on submarine propulsion system and combustion research dr ten has more than 270 peer reviewed papers in journals conferences and symposiums winning for instance emerald best paper award dr ten has delivered many keynotes to many universities in different countries he has supervised more than 100 post graduate theses and served as external examiner to phd theses professor ten has publications in scopus q1 to q4 web of science thai tier 1 etc dr ten is editorial chief of journal of social science and humanities rmp publications and thailand based international journal of multidisciplinary in management and tourism it is our pleasure to have professor chai ching ten with us in this mega event i would like to invite on behalf of chandragupt institute and inspire research association we welcome you professor ten welcome you sir Thank you, Professors Ravid uh, Modi, and uh, it is my uh, uh, I have uh, sent this uh, keynote today, the, my opening speech, so I will read it. Uh, it is my honor uh, to chair the second day session of this uh, conference, which, uh, as we know, the centralizes on the uh, themes of innovative practices in education, uh, humanities, and social sciences. Uh, the combinations of these themes can lead to unlimited insights and opportunity and I'll demonstrate a couple of them for research and practical development. Here I, I, I would just list a couple of them for uh, the stimulating our the thought process and the discussion today. Uh, first, we must acknowledge that to ensure continuing realization of innovative, uh, innovative practices uh, into education expense, we must ensure Uh, students can uh, perceive themselves as innovators. So what, I, what does it mean? It means that we as a students must be able to perceive that we are in need innovators. And, and how do we do that? And this requires our educational institution to shift mindset. It means everybody got to work together, it's commitment, investment. Uh, for instance, By shifting our linear systems oriented Newtonian worldview, which means that, uh, you know, in the Newtonians, in F equal to MA, so things are very much uh, we know of, uh, you know, one causes the other in a very sy uh, systematic linear way. 
very easy to understand. Uh, we must shift that to a quantum paradigm and the role of social psychological and social techni technical interconnectedness and their energy fields that everybody's a part of it, uh, influencing each other becomes very, very important for a sustainable future. We already know it uh, from uh, today's world uh, war uh, between uh, in, in, in Ukraine, you know, things get uh, uh, becomes unsustainable, even starting from a butterfly effect in, in a small area. So this new uh, humanities, uh, social science perspective will provide a new context a new context to enable us to conceptualize new educational practices. So in quantum orientation, innovation practices would need to make use of humanity, social science, energy field that everyone interrelates and co-creates to produce uh, the now and the future. So uh, on the other hand, uh, the second day uh, themes also reinforce values orientation, such as market value and benefit of the invention uh, in the social science perspective, the educational value uh, uh, for this uh, innovation in the educational perspective, uh, which centralizes on creativity spirit, which is of humanities. Thus, we are exploiting to the advantage and equilibrium balancing benefits of the humanities education and social science dimension. I would uh, summarize using three I inspiration, uh, which can be inferred from these three themes, humanity, education, social sciences of today's themes. The instrumental aspect of and role of education, which is one of the I instrumental education. Uh, the inspirational motivation of humanities, I think it's very important to creativity. Uh, another I, inspiration. Uh, the institutional significance of social sciences uh, in innovation effort that each of us will devote. The uh, institutional significance is very important. Today, we also have a, a various uh, uh, different types of uh, different, uh, various, different, uh, various uh, technical uh, papers discussing uh, institutional uh, issue as well. So lastly, we can also look into the inspiration of humanities and social science dimension uh, to contribute to education and innovation practices. That is, social understanding can lead students or anyone to design and plan solutions that are more socially sustainable. In other words, if we want to understand how we can do a good job in innovation, we have to understand our social sciences. We have to understand our society. And if we can do that, then we will bring that understanding uh, to help us design uh, uh, to uh, ed better educate our students. So we need more research and works are needed to understand and comprehend the complexity and dynamics of the three themes that we are very, 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 uh, 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 in gratitude to uh, Inspira Research Association because uh, uh, with Inspira, they come up with the very important things for us to think about it. Uh, and, uh, and also the Chantra Kut uh, uh, Institutes of Management, uh, Patna Bihar, uh, India for organizing these international uh, conferences. So we always uh, hungry and uh, thank you, Inspira, for, uh, for uh, taking the time to think uh, of these uh, themes and allow us to uh, utilize these, thing, these themes to stimulate our thought processes. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and as I uh, just mentioned, it, uh, it's very inspirational. And, and these three themes, together with innovation, it really uh, stimulates our, uh, our uh, devotion, our commitment our spirit of uh, continuing dedicating to the society and to uh, our role as teachers. So thank you very much again, Inspira Association, Research Association. Thank you. And all the best to our to this uh, presentation today. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chai Ching Tan, School of Management, Ratan Kusin College of Creative Entrepreneurship, Thailand.
Professor Tan is the chairperson for today's session. Dr. Tan has always been very, very inspirational and instrumental in all the Inspira conferences. And uh, sir, you said very rightly, it is said also that necessity is the mother of invention. So actually, if we need to invent and innovate, social sciences understanding is very important. And if we understand the social sciences, then only we can add value in our society, in all the fields, education and society. So innovative practices are not only for present, but for the future of the country. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Chai Ching Tan, sir, for joining us and for always inspiring us with your words. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor Tan, once Thank again. You. Now I would like to welcome and invite a great academician and eminent personality our today's additional chairperson, Professor Anil Mehta, Professor of Management and Legal Studies, Vanasthali University, Vanasthali, and former head Department of Business Administration, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur, and Vice President, Inspira Research Association, for delivering the additional chairperson speech. Professor Anil Mehta, sir. Welcome, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Respected Professor Modi, President Inspira, Mr. Chai Ching Teng, chairperson of this session, other distinguished uh, resource persons, keynote speaker, and your participants. At the outset, I welcome you all on the second day of this international conference in the capacity of Vice President Inspira. Like other conferences of Inspira, this time also we have got wonderful response from every part of the country and abroad. One thing which I noticed during last few conference, that the quality of research papers are improving day by day. Yesterday also, there were a large number of presentations and we found that presenters have really worked hard in terms of the contents delivery and research methodology. It's a good indication. It clearly reflects that now the trend is fast changing and young budding researchers are also very much keen to give some valuable contribution in the fund of knowledge. In fact, research is just one part, but nowadays, nowadays there is greater focus that research has no meaning unless this uh, research would be useful for the society at large. As we know that there are tremendous changes as far as uh, the economy is concerned. Yesterday's speakers emphasized that during the COVID period and now in post-COVID scenario, unless organizations are proactive, unless they adopt the new strategies to cope with the global environment, it would be quite difficult to survive. Over the last few decades, organizations are coming up with quite innovative and creative strategies. The biggest challenge before the entrepreneurs is the marketing. Recently, we have realized 
that whatever marketing strategies are adopted by small scale organizations, it should be quite different than their counterparts. That is large organizations and large businesses. As you know that startups are emerging very fast and biggest challenge before startups is marketing. And now a new area is fast emerging in the field of marketing that is entrepreneurial marketing. In fact, the primary challenge being faced by the entrepreneurs in competing against large, better known and more resourceful companies is marketing. How can a startup with a small staff, limited budget and less customers propensity based compete against the giants in their industry? It can do this by turning its weaknesses into the strength. By their very nature, startup companies can be more flexible and unorthodox than their major competitors. Entrepreneurial marketing is less about a single marketing strategy and more about a marketing spirit that differentiate itself from traditional marketing practices. It doesn't follow many of the fundamental principles of marketing because they are typically designed for large, well-established firms. Entrepreneurial marketing utilizes a toolkit of new and unorthodox marketing practices to help emerging firm to gain a significant place in crowded markets. Entrepreneurial marketing can be used by any small business owner looking to market their products or services. Since this marketing doesn't require as much capital as other types, it is well suited for entrepreneurs with limited operating budget. The ideal entrepreneur for this type of marketing would gain experience and marketing knowledge about the product or services that they plan to market. Entrepreneurial marketing is proactive identification and exploration of opportunities for acquiring and retaining profitable customers through innovative approaches to risk management, resource leveraging, and value creation. The most common feature of entrepreneurial marketing include innovation, risk-taking, and being proactive. Entrepreneurial marketing campaigns try to highlight the company's greatest strength while emphasizing their value to the customers focusing on innovative products or exemplary customer services is a way to stand out from competitions. They make this pitch using cheap and accessible tool, including viral videos, tweets, Facebook pages, and email marketing. Any and all marketing strategies can be considered as long as they produce results. In a competitive market, it can be easy to get lost in the crowd. One of the biggest challenge for entrepreneur is standing out from their competition. Marketing in new, unusual, or aggressive way is the best way to illustrate what makes a business unique. Some of the important strategies that worked successfully in the past are number one, relationship marketing that focuses on creative, a strong link 
between the brand and the customer. Expeditionary marketing involves creating marketing, developing innovative products. Companies act as leader rather than followers. One-to-one -one marketing. Customers are marketed to as individual. All marketing efforts are personalized. Real-time marketing that uses the power of technology to interact with the customer in a real time. Viral marketing places marketing messages on the internet so that they can share and expand it, their products and services to the customer. Digital marketing leverages the power of internet tools like emails and social networking to support marketing efforts. So entrepreneurial marketing is beneficial because it doesn't require a lot of money to be spent making it well suited for the entrepreneur with limited budget. Since the cost side of operating a business is often high, an inexpensive marketing plan can be a vital asset. Entrepreneurial marketing is also beneficial because it allows entrepreneurs to have more freedom in how they market their products or services, making it easier for them to choose a plan that works best for them and their business. I can say that in the times to come, perhaps there will be new innovations in marketing strategies. Perhaps in the classroom, we have taught our students more about four P's or seven uh, uh, P's of service marketing. But nowadays, perhaps with the changing times, we'll have to teach our students about the new innovations in marketing that is the need of the hour for young marketers mm -hmm. to apply in real life situation. I think the post COVID Scenario is quite promising for those who are quite innovative and creative in their strategies and particularly in the field of marketing area. Those who want to create an impact in that industry in which they are working, perhaps they will have to keep constant watch on the marketing trends and have to be very innovative and creative. I'm quite sure that in today's uh, presentations also, we find a lot of innovative things which are to be adopted by the entrepreneurs and managers. So with these words, I wish all the participants all the best. Once again, thank you very much. Over to Dr. Ravi Modi. Thank you so much, Professor Mehta. Yes, Aarti ma'am. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, sorry, actually I shifted from mobile to laptop. So, it took... <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Anil Mehta, sir, additional chairperson for today's session, Vice President, Inspira Research Association, Professor Banasthali University, former Professor, uh, Department of Business Administration, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur, and our teacher, Professor Anil Mehta, sir, always comes up with such an interesting and unique topic. Uh, just before that, Professor Chai Ching Tang, sir, talked about innovation in humanities and social sciences so that it can bring changes in the society. And after that, Professor Anil Mehta talked about the innovation in marketing strategies and talked about the entrepreneurial marketing. Uh, that is a new concept uh, I, we have heard today, sir. That is so, so interesting. And after listening to you, I was thinking that I should also go through this concept and uh, we should also come up with the research uh, on this topic. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much for inspiring the participants as you always do. Thank you so much for being a part of uh, Inspira Research association conferences all the time and guiding and blessing us.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Mehta, sir, once again. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to welcome and invite our today's eminent keynote speaker, Professor Ankleda Lulas, Professor at University Haxi Zeka, Kosovo, Europe. Professor Lulas is a Doctor of Science in Finance and Accounting, works as a Professor Assistant at the Faculty of Management in Tourism, Hospitality and Environment at University Haxi Zeka of Kosovo. She is the co-founder of BOND, Ambassador for Financial Evaluation, Ambassador for Women Tech, as well as the Ambassador for Research and Innovations. She is the Country Director of International Young Society and Country Director of World Voice International. She is a member of the editorial board of many magazines in different countries of the world, such as USA, Belgium, Georgia, Germany, Denmark, Ukraine, India, Pakistan, Philippines, etc. Professor Lulaz has a great experience in international conferences as a supervisor, as a member of the scientific committee, as a member of the editorial board, as a session chair in universities, institutes, and various countries of the world as follows, like Belgium, France, Switzerland, Austria, Turkey, United Kingdom, South Korea, India, Italy, etc. She is also the member of Institutes of Economics, Education and Research. She has experience in projects through Erasmus plus Euphoria, Tempest programs, etc. She is the winner of many awards in the world, such as Teaching, Science, Creative Ideas, a Successful Woman, Peace, etc. She has been a distinguished student in Kosovo and now has a number of acknowledgements from students as a distinguished professor. She is ready for collaborations and teamwork also. And on behalf of Chandragupt Institute and Inspira Research Association, it is our pleasure to have Professor Ankla Lulas right away from Europe. We welcome you, ma'am. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you so much for sparing your time. We welcome you. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to share my screen, if I can. Can you see my screen clearly? Yes, ma'am, it's coming, yeah. Now we can see. Okay, greetings to all of you. Thank you so very much for inviting me. Really, I'm very honored and very glad to be here. So uh, today uh, I will talk about a critical review of uh, why households uh, lack emergency savings funds based on my research. Uh, thank you once again for inviting me. As a, a short time, I will speak quickly about uh, my topic. So, the, uh, so uh, in this slide, you can see generally information about uh, savings, about personal incomes, etc. A new point of view based on my research, as I mentioned before, learn a special skill, a skill and uh, in the end, a change basic attitude. So um, I am Professor Enkeli Dalulai from Kosovo. I am Professor of Finance and Accounting. I have a great experience around the world. And now, uh, what next? So in this slide, you can see so many theories and so many contribution around uh, the world about uh, household economies or savings, consumption, incomes, etc. So we all know people who have lost uh, money or not saved properly. Uh, to make a uh, good financial behavior in relation to savings, surround, please keep in mind, because it's very important, uh, surround yourself with friends and family that allow, allow you to be yourself. So in this case, uh, households that saves, uh, um, saves for emergency funds uh, have higher incomes and are financially educated or have better, uh, how to say, financial behavior than households that are not financially educated. So uh, some of economics models uh, from, uh, from uh, around the world, uh, around uh, documents, reports, etc., uh, have agreed that households need to effectively save money to cope with uh, emergency, especially in these uh, difficult times with COVID-19. So it's very important. Uh, please uh, 
the key is to identify what you are doing so for your incomes, for your savings, for your consumption, for your personal incomes, at your family, at your, yourself, etc. Remember that a family can be covered by debt by buying a luxury items, uh, example, car, house, who, uh, houses, clothing of uh, expenses, brands, etc. And do not become one of those families that do not save for emergency just to look beautiful in the eyes of the others. And some of previous uh, practices emphasize that households, economies have been uninformed about financial behavior in relation uh, to savings. Then other findings on financial uh, savings related with uh, incomes, personal incomes, emphasize that there are low income households that save more in various, various forms that higher incomes and more educated families. Therefore, uh, programs should be designed to adapt uh, to the needs and barriers related to savings. So households with good financial behavior have increased uh, savings as by uh, Morgan and Beverly in 20. Uh, three and what next so it's very important about this uh, topic as I mentioned before based on my research you will see three factors example financial behavior related to savings and uh, number two uh, savings funds based on financial behavior and factor number three implication or non-savings due to financial behavior, especially with the, uh, in this uh, time with COVID-19. And what next? So in this slide, you can see two hypotheses. The main hypothesis, saving factors and financial behavior are not important, uh, do not have a positive effect on uh, households or emergencies. Or alternative hypothesis, Saving factors and financial behavior are very important. Uh, so uh, they have a positive effect on households' economies for emergencies. So in this slide, uh, especially in this table, you can see the results about variable gender, age, employment, members of the family, and in the end, income. Uh, in the income variables within the family, the monthly income is uh, 300 to 500 euros or in percentage 24.8%. In the gender variables, one, a woman gave the greatest answer in a percentage uh, uh, of 16.8%. Uh, in the age variables, the largest answer was given by persons in the age group 25 to 34 years or in a percentage of 14%. Uh, in the family variables, you can see that the persons who have gained the largest answer fa uh, have families of three to five members or 44.8%. And uh, what next? So in this slide, you can see, as I mentioned before, in this uh, topic are included three factors related with uh, uh, savings in, uh, uh, for emergencies. So in this slide, you can see the results about the factor number one or financial behavior in relation to savings. So the result uh, explains that 91% for factor number one uh, depends on the independent variables. Example, saving and investment are very important or saving as cash or in other variables, savings such as uh, deposits or non-withdrawal of money from accounts, or uh, savings for, uh, uh, for consumption, saving for health and uh, home as well, or saving for necessity and survival of the family.
So while uh, 9% depends on other variables outside this model by mistake, uh, uh, random error. Also, you can see in this uh, results that the beta coefficient uh, shows that all independent variables, as I mentioned before, example, savings, unspent money, etc., cetera, uh, are very important for emergency funds, but the variables which is the most important uh, is the consumption savings in 49%. And what next? So in this slide, you can see the results uh, for Factor number two or saving funds based on financial behavior for all uh, families included in this uh, in this topic or in this paper. So the table or the results uh, explain that 90, uh, 91% uh, for factor number two or uh, saving funds based on financial behavior uh, depends on the independent variables. Example, a survival savings or unspent money savings or savings related to the financial situation or emergency savings funds. Uh, based on the coefficient beta, all independent variables uh, are very important in this model. But the most important for uh, this uh, model is uh, unspent money savings for all families. And what next? Uh, what about or what is important about uh, implication or non savings due to financial behavior? for all uh, households or all families in my country. So uh, the results explain that uh, 96% for factor number three or depends on the uh, independent variables. Example, investment in luxury items, as I mentioned before, uh, or lack of awareness about savings and increasing concern in situation of extraordinary or excessive giving of money to family or friends, while 4% depends on other variables outside this model by random or error. And uh, based on the coefficient, uh, beta coefficient indicates that all independent variables are very, very important in the model, but the most important variables being uh, is excessive uh, giving of money to family and uh, friends as, as well. And uh, what about this slide? So in this slide, you can see uh, a short conclusion and the recommendation, as, a, as I mentioned before, is it a short time? Uh, to speak about savings. Uh, so as a conclusion, savings factors and financial behavior are very important for all families or uh, all, uh, all household economies have a positive effect uh, for emergency, especially for uh, uh, COVID-19. Starting from uh, literature review or financial behavior practices or uh, in relation with savings or another research documents, uh, reports uh, to the method of the factor analysis or uh, multi multiple regression. Uh, research results in the interpretation of the main results and tending proves that the alternative hypothesis has a positive effect on households economies and uh, in some variables. Uh, as I mentioned before, to the result for the three factors, households economy should take uh, into account the recommendation of the research or uh, in order to uh, further increase financial behavior in relation to savings, especially for emergencies. As, a, as the main recommendation based on factor number one, factor number two, and factor number three, as you can see the uh, test uh, KMO or alpha or another te test, the main findings is the lack of the financial behavior to save for the emergencies for all families. Uh, these findings are very important uh, in order for households to be aware 
in terms of financial behavior in relation to savings because there is no emergency fund to cover their needs. So this is my uh, short uh, speech for your conference. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention and your attention. Thank you once again for inviting me. If you have any question, please uh, you can ask me. Thank you once again. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, Professor Enkleda Lulas, who has joined us from Kosovo, Europe. Ma'am, first of all, we are very, very thankful to you for joining us from all together a different time zone. What is the time right now out there, ma'am? Now it's uh, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. See, with the kind of dedication she is showing, we are so thankful. We are so grateful to you, ma'am. We are sitting in an altogether different time zone. It is um, it is 4 p.m. here, almost 5 p.m. now. So that means, you know, how you have managed to take out time for us. Thank you so much. And you are looking very pretty. And ma'am, the best thing I would like to tell you is, after listening to your speech, I am sure all the elderly people, especially our grandmothers, grandfathers must be very, very happy. Because in India, I believe that this concept saving for emergency is uh, there only in Asian countries, in India specifically. Because our grandparents always keep telling us not to spend much on clothes or, you know, outer things which we, which we buy just to show off and keep some funds for future, for emergencies. So such a wonderful topic you have chosen and you have researched upon. And that is very, very significant in India, I must tell you. So thank you so much for letting us know that whole of the world talks about saving for emergencies. Thank you so much for such a wonderful deliberation, ma'am. We are really grateful to have you here with us. Thank you. It's a great pleasure. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am Ankleda Lulas, for delivering very impressive and wonderful speech. Thank you so much, ma'am, once again. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now I would like to welcome and invite our another eminent keynote speaker, Dr. M. L. Vasita, Associate Professor, Department of Business Administration, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. Dr. Vasita is presently Vice Principal. University Commerce College and Associate Professor, Department of Business Administration, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. He obtained his PhD, MCOM, and PGDLL degrees from Mohanlal Sukhadia University, Udaipur, and also an MBA degree from IGNU, New Delhi. Professor Vasita is the managing editor of the departmental peer reviewed journal named Journal of Business and Management. He is having a total experience of 19 years in the areas of human resource management and marketing management with four books and more than 35 research papers. He has also organized over 10 national and international conferences. On behalf of Chandragupta Institutes and Inspira Research Association, we welcome you, uh, Professor Vasita, sir. And Thank we invite you, sir. for your speech. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor S.S. Modi, sir, uh, President Inspira Research Association, IRA. Dr. R.K. Modi, sir, General Secretary, Inspira Research Association. Professor Chai Ching Tan, Chairperson of this session. Professor Anil Mehta, sir, chairperson, uh, Additional Chairperson of this session. Professor Lulaj, Dr. Arthi Mem distinguished guests and all participants. Today we are discussing about the research and innovations in education, humanities and social sciences. In this regard, I would like to discuss education dimensions for future. The education system should be developed on some dimensions. First is the artificial intelligence 
and the future of skills the artificial intelligence and the future of skills help policy makers understand how artificial intelligence and robotics are likely to affect work and how education should change in anticipation second dimension we should consider is 21st century children's phenomena because in the 21st century the mindset of the children has totally changed because many children have access to tablets and smartphones before they learn to walk and talk so first of all we should identify the nature of the children and accordingly we should develop our education system we should also identify that what is the nature of the childhood in today's era what type of parenting we are giving what type of physical and mental inertia they have so we should consider this type of activities to develop the higher education in the future so we should also work out on this type of dimensions because when if we will identify the nature of the children and if we will develop the education system accordingly then definitely we will do some better for the society third dimension we should consider is trends shaping education because as per the demand of time we should change the education system trends shaping education supports strategic thinking on the future of education highlighting key economic social demographic and technological trends and their connection to education policy and practice it helps us scan the horizon for emerging phenomena using scenarios of to explore the changes that appears most probable as well as those that we are not expecting so we should do the digital transformation in higher education institutions because it is a driver of social oriented innovations we should do the research work to meet out the some objectives to develop to innovate in the higher education like is to understand the concept of digital tra transformation and its social dimension we should also work out to identify the main challenges facing universities in the digital era to clarify the relationship between digital transformation and social innovation also we we have to work out on these aspects also to understand the role of digital tools in fostering the social dimension of higher education institutions we also require to work out to verify whether the accelerated application of digital learning has favored the social dimension of this innovative pedagogical method so we should work out if we want to innovate some education institution education system so we should work out on these objectives in the concluding remarks for innovation in higher education i would like to draw the attention of researcher and policy makers that they should work out on the following directions for example e learning trends because world is based on technologies so we should work out with the technologies we should cope up with the technologies and open curriculum should be developed for the students the traditional pattern of the education system we now we have to stop them and on the basis of open curriculum system we should go further on this basis we should also work out on the competency based learning because if we will introduce the competency based learning then definitely we will give some better for the society as per the changing nature of the faculty members innovation may implement because nowadays the nature of the faculty it is also much uh, important that we should consider the faculties innovations also digital textbook 
may promote. In the present data, we should work out on the digital material and digital textbooks also. Artificial intelligence may con also consider because when we discuss in a present era, when we work out on in a robotic era, then artificial intelligence is also the important uh, factor. We should also be develop a smarter learning management system to motivate the education system, to develop the uh, education system. We should also work out in these aspects also. New pedagogies of higher education should be introduced. Especially in the Indian context, as per the present global trends, the new education policy should be executed. So this type of measures we should use for innovation in higher education. I am very thankful to organizers for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Vasita, sir. Dr. M. L. Vasita, Associate Professor, Department of Business Administration, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. Such a significant and such an apt topic you have chosen, sir. And I must tell you personally that I have witnessed the kind of work Dr. Vasita is doing. He is very calm, very poised. He works with so much of calmness. And as he's talking about artificial intelligence, robotics, and the use of digital uh, media, digital library for the students in higher education, I must tell you that when this COVID started, uh, like any other teacher, we were also like in dilemma and we were so surprised that how will we continue with the education system. For private institutions, still it is okay because they have a big team of uh, people who are digitally literate. But in public sector, it was it seemed to be very difficult that how students will continue with their learning. But with the efforts of Dr. Uh, Dr. M. L. Vasita, sir, and Professor Mamta Jain, ma'am, I have witnessed that how they never stopped the learning of the students. So beautifully they work. Thank you so much for bringing us uh, uh, such an important topic among us, sir. And you, you are very, absolutely, you are absolutely right, sir. According to the age and requirement, we must uh, opt the technology, AI, and robotics for the students in higher education. Thank you so much for bringing such an important topic amongst us. Thank you, Professor Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Vasita, sir for delivering very informative, insightful, and informative speech. Thank you so much, Professor Vasitas, once again. So, thank you so much to all the keynote speakers, chairperson, additional chairperson, for very informative and effective speech. And now we may start paper presentations by participants with the permission of chairperson, Professor Tan, sir, and additional chairperson, Professor Mehta, sir. So, sir, can we start, sir? Yes. Continue. Now, we can. We can start. Sir, any any uh, guidance to? Yeah. Uh, all the presenters are requested to confine their presentation for maximum three to four minutes, and they should just confine their presentation to the research methodology in very brief and the major findings. Because you know that in three minutes time, uh, they may not be able to cover the entire text. Uh, of course, uh, uh, papers have already been uh, submitted. So we request all the participants to be very, very brief and just confine their presentation to three to four minutes only so that we can wind up the session in time. Thank you, sir. As you all know that today there are, I, I think, around 64 presenters. So I also request you all to please keep it short, the main uh, the main slides like objectives, research methodology. So the serial number one, Xavier Henry G, PG student of from Tamil Nadu. Yeah, please you can unmute, Mr. Xavier. So very glad evening to all my faculty members. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Shall I start the presentation, sir? Sir? Yeah, yeah, now you can start. Yeah, you can start now. Okay, sir. 
if possible open your video also okay bye Sir, is the screen visible, sir? Yes, it is visible. Um, very glad evening to all my brothers and sisters. My topic is about the study of financial performance and analysis of LMW Employee Cooperative Thrift and Credit Society uh, Limited. Um, the introduction. The cooperative study was first formed in um, uh, India in 1904, and it was a Credit Cooperative Act, and it was uh, 1912. It was uh, organized to the non-credit cooperative, and the uh, LMW Employees Cooperative Theft and Credit Society was registered as a cooperative society in Tamil Nadu Cooperatives Act of uh, 53 on uh, 1961. The operations was. Uh, rendering loans and improving the deposit of the members who have joined in the society and improve their status economically and socially. Um, the statement of the problem. The problem faced by the society is lack of effective management by the members to promote the society profits and the lack of uh, administrative setups and the uh, administrative body was not modernized to the current uh, behavior, current uh, period. Uh, the members are not participating in the management activities and uh, uh, they are not aware of the cooperative thoughts and ideas. So the, comp so the society was uh, decreasing their funds and the members year by year. These were the um, major problems faced by the society. So I have taken this uh, problem to analyze. The object of the study to focus on the LMW Employee Cooperative Theft and Credit Society to know the administrative setup of the employees cooperative society in uh, India and Tamil Nadu, to determine the major factor influence the society development, to evaluate the financial performance of the particular society, which is LMW cooperative society. Uh, methodology. The sampling size uh, which I have used is a purposive sampling method, which uh, makes me to select the data for my requirement and I have choose uh, only five years of data of the particular society. The area of study is uh, LMW Employee Cooperative Theft and Credit Society, Tenak Balim, Koyamathur District, Tamil Nadu, India. The um, table shows the financial performance of the societies for last uh, five years from 2016, 17 to 2020, 21. The membership of the society was decreasing year by year from uh, uh, 1,209 to 927 from past years. And the growth rate and the growth index was also decreasing. The performance of the members was not um, valuable in the uh, performance of the society. The share capital invested in the societies uh, was uh, also increasing but the members of the society was also decreasing because of the shares and the performance of the society was increasing. So the shares value of the society also increased. The growth rate of the society was not stable every year. It was increasing and decreasing. Next, the deposits of the society was uh, around uh, uh, 13, point, uh, 13 crores, 49 lakhs, 32,699 in the 2016. But in the last year, it was come down to 12 crores, 28 lakhs, 15,671. The growth rate and the growth index were also not stable every year. It was around uh, minus 11.29 uh, growth rate in the last year. Uh, okay. Reserve fund at the... Conclusion. Please come to the conclusion now. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, the conclusion of the study is to focus on the members' performance and to improve their efficiency to work in the uh, society's development and the maintain 
huge uh, deposits and depo and investment in various sources so the society can develop uh, their sources high and the members of the society can be benefited more economically and socially thank you sir uh, thank you can you show us your objective again oh one minute sir what, what was your first objective just a minute Anyway, sir, the screen present, sir. Okay, okay, fine. You just you can just just tell us the first objective. That's all. No need. Objective also. Yeah. What was the first objective? Sir, to focus on the uh, administrative setup of the Elanduli Cooperative Theft and Credit Society, sir. In fact, uh, focus uh, just to focus cannot be the objective of any research. You know. Of sir, first uh, we want to focus, sir, and then. i have only yeah. chosen the financial yes. performance sir that that's very true that uh, uh, of course in order to uh, have that uh, analysis of financial performance you have to focus but there was no need of writing that to focus here anyway thank you thank you thank you sir ravi ji next paper please thank you so much Serial number three, Arti ji. This is a scholar from Starex University, Haryana. Please unmute. Uh, good evening, uh, respected professors and all the participants of the conference. Am I visible, sir? Yes, it is visible. It is visible. Okay, sir. Thank you. The screen is visible, but you are not. Uh, your video is not visible. No problem, ma'am. You can continue. Okay, sir. Maybe it's a network issue, but I have already on on the my video. Good. my topic is the women employment under special economic zone in state haryana ssz emerges out of the attempt to improve the epz policy these are the considered as the growth drivers in the developing countries ssz were all the result of the spurt in the economic growth it creates an increase in employment investment and export promotions at fdi also as we know that the increase in investment also lead to increase in employment consumptions and income all these are the growth indicators haryana has the fourth largest per capita income in india women are a powerful economic force for our country's growth they make an important contribution as an entrepreneur and the employees so the ssz how many women are employed in the state haryana will discussed in this paper objective women employment under special economic zone in state haryana research methodology i have taken uh, prime uh, primary and secondary data primary data uh, uh, i have taken uh, on uh, sampling unit of female workers who are under ssz unit in state haryana sample size are uh, 30 female workers in ssz unit in state haryana i have taken a uh, first uh, uh, question from my questionnaire that is women empowerment in increasing through ssz where the 75% of the female employees of ssz unit thinks that women empowerment in is increasing through special economic zone where the 25% of female employees denied that 20 uh, special economic zone is not increasing in a women empowerment and women employment also the second question from the distance from the workplace of female uh, employees from the ssz unit from their work, uh, home where 20% of female employee workplace between 0 to 5 km and 36% of female employees workplace between 5 to 10 km whereas 44% women workplace between 10 to 15 km data analysis for the secondary data the data is as on uh, 12 13 financial year are 2008 9 10 11 12 till 13 here we as, uh, can see that the uh, women employment in haryana ssz as increasing 
So this paper we analyzed the women employment effect on SZ in state Haryana is increasing, but uh, increasing but at a decreasing rate. So uh, government can take necessary steps for uh, increase women employment, and they can be. Uh, we know that the women workplace should be between uh, for the women empowerment. The workplace should be between in the between the five kilometers, so the um, women can uh, serve better. Hence, the data show the increasing rate of women employment, but a decreasing rate. Thank you. Thank you, Arthi ji. The only suggestion to you is that your objective, which you just mentioned in your paper, appears to be quite vague. You have to be very, very specific while writing your research objective. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Uh, here, number five, A.B. Vetrinathan ji. Yeah. Vetrinathan ji, please unmute. Yes, He's sir. from Tamil Nadu, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. Yes, Vatriji, you can on your video also. Just a minute. Am I visible? Yes. Good evening to one all present here. First of all, I would like to thank for this opportunity to present a seminar on my study on Madhura Cooperative Thrift and Credit Society Limited. Uh, introduction page. Uh, Madhura Employee Cooperative Thrift and Credit Society Limited number CC22. 43 is registered as a cooperative society under Tamil Nadu Cooperatives Act 36 of 1985. The operation of the study, the society be utilized to loan to the members for useful purpose and to act as an agent for joint passage of the domestic and uh, other requirements of its members. The members are benefited from low class to the next level in the society. Must Statement of the problem. The problem faced by the society is lack of effective management by the members to promote the so society's profit position and poor administration setup as compared to other societies' administration. Uh, members in the society are always in need of money to meet up their emergency. Proper accountability is not done. Lack of member participation, lack of coordination between the members. The members of the society are not aware of the corporate thoughts and ideas. My objective of the study to focus on MKS Cooperative Society, to know the administration setup of the society, to analyze the financial position of the particular society, to promote social and economic betterment of the members with the help of cooperative principle. The methodology used, the study is based on survey collected from MKS Cooperative Thrift and Credit Society with the help of secondary data only. Secondary data were collected with the possible records like annual report, magazines and books, area of st study undertaken in the MKS Cooperative Thrift and Credit Society Limited, Dharmapuri, Tamil Nadu, India. Sampling size was five years of data. Sampling technique is used in the study was purposive sampling. This table has been clearly gives the view of the membership position, share capital and deposit position. It has been increased in in recent tense in 2020 to 2021 because the society has been providing more more loans and advances it very much effectively and uh, uh, members in the society also repaying their uh, loans properly so it has been increased the share capital deposit also has been increased in recent tense and the profit portion of the business of the society has been increased in recent tense in a lot and uh, growth rate and growth index has been increases as well as uh, my limitation of the study is limited to five years of data the study was focused within the society only lack of previous research study on the topic the conclusion of the study is purely depends upon the data collected from the society my suggestion toward the study trained and experienced staff stands income could be increased in the society income or increase authorized share capital work should be the part of the society. Proper planning should be made in each and every area. Each and every member must be updated with the technology used in the modern world. 
my conclusion of the study is after of analyzing uh, the society uh, the they will improve their performance in following years the society shows that the profit portion will not be decreased in recent trends and members will repay their loans properly the awareness in the repayment of the loan for the development of the society as well as the personal uh, economy mentioned by the society to the members properly thank you thank you very much of course it was a presentation the only observation is that your suggestions appear to be very very general you have to be very very specific you know that uh, suggestions uh, even without the study you could have given these suggestions so after your study you could have given some more specific and precise suggestions useful for that society thank you thank you so much serial number 6 dr mamta associate professor dr bhim rao ambedkar college university of delhi yes ma'am please unmute yes ma'am so first of all good evening to all of you i am dr mamta from dr bhim rao ambedkar college university of delhi i am just sharing my screen so first of all just give me that so title of my research paper is esg and the rising oil and gas prices then objectives of the paper are the objective is to analyze the impact of esg investments on oil and gas prices because nowadays oil and gas prices are increasing we will use the data available uh, on madam our... just told madam just told uh, what writing your title uh, you should have uh, instead of using the abbreviation esg you could have written the full uh, term what esg stands for okay sir i'm just explaining it uh, esg but, means yes. environment social governance so you could have mentioned here itself in the title it's a okay okay sir i will i will do it yeah yes. please please Move so forward. esg stands for environment social governance and uh, the objectives of the paper is to analyze the impact on the uh, esg investments on uh, oil and gas prices for this purpose we have used the data available on oil and gas exploration investments esg investments in the energy sector and oil and gas prices then first we have uh, drawn a correlation between rising esg investments and the falling oil and gas investments because and next is to find out the correlation between falling investment in oil and gas and their prices the next is introduction esg is fast becoming a very important metrics for investors because investors want to invest in yeah, just introduction esg stands for environmental social and governance there are these are the basically three broad parameters on the basis of investors are investing nowadays and e stands for environment and it is basically the company's responsibility towards the environment and its conservation s stands for so social and it refers to the company's responsibility towards the society and next is governance it refers to how the organization is governed which is the system by which companies are directly controlled corporate governance is very important to evaluate the company's ethical standings so esg rating is company's score card for these categories based on broad ratings the next is uh, esg's impact on the energy sector general consensus in the market is that industries need to address the growing environmental issues oil and gas industry are facing accelerated demand to address the implications in the energy transition or there is transition in the energy system now all organizations are shifting from high carbon to low carbon sources several oil and gas companies have advanced in the renewable space and they have set net zero emission targets this has resulted in investment being driven away from the traditional oil and gas explorations a lot of nations 
uh, and corporations have pledged not to invest any additional money in the exploration of traditional sources of energy. So next is how these two are related. ESG is drawing investments away from the traditional exploration of oil and gas, which has left the industry without sufficient capital to meet the future demand. Without the sufficient funds for exploration, the supply of oil and gas is drying up while the demand is getting stronger. Environmentally sustainable sources of energy are still in the infant stages and not been scaled enough to re successfully replace oil and gas. And further, ESG sources of energy are more expensive than the traditional oil and gas. All these factors lead to the increase in oil and gas prices. Uh, please come to the conclusion now. Okay, okay, sir. Just a moment. The conclusion is that a lot of countries are pledging not to invest any more money in the oil and gas and coal exploration in the near future. This coupled with the fact that renewable energy is more expensive than the traditional sources of energy is leading to increase in the cost of traditional sources of energy. Second is that while the global energy market is clearly in transition, not enough focus is being given to how long it will take to transition, transition. that is shift from the uh, traditional to the ESG. In the meantime, the world faces uh, supply risks, again a backdrop of steady in aggregate oil consumption, demand is increasing. As fossil, fossil fuel producers, oil and gas companies are among the most exposed to energy transition, this could weigh on long-term average oil prices. And another is high and volatile oil prices are actually a th threat to reducing gas, uh, greenhouse gas emission to fight climate change. It will increase the cost of renewable energy by increasing their cost of inputs and it will work against the energy transition. Thank you. You have not given the research methodology in your paper? But... Uh, sir, I have not completed it, so it's just the... Okay. I will I will cover it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Raviji, you are not audible? Yes, Poonamji, you can continue. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, serial number eight. Eight. Dr. Poonam eight. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Oh, Poonam okay. 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 Uh, my title of my paper is A Study of the Top Three Indian Cosmetic Industries. Uh, as we all know, monopolistic, I am an economist, so I'm just taking it in terms of economics. Monopolistic competition means monopoly plus perfect competition. And the cosmetic industry, monopolistic competition characterize, uh, characterizes cosmetic industry because uh, the main characteristic of monopolistic competition is to bring differentiated product into the market. And the cosmetic industry is all about the differentiation in the product, different style, different packaging. As we all know, since 1991, there was, before 1991, there was the hold of traditional players, traditional cosmetic players in the Indian market. But after liberalization, our, uh, uh, in, uh, there was Indian women at international beauty pageants and cosmetic industry has come into limelight in a bigger way because uh, electronic media, internet, they are giving the exposure to cosmetic industry earlier. Cosmetics was used for some uh, functional for functions for uh, for some selective purpose. Now we use cosmetic in day to day uses and price uh, like in monopolistic competition. There is a, always a price war. Always every industry tries to give more offers, discount, different style of packaging. In this way, their cost increase and their price is always greater than marginal cost uh, because of the characteristic of monopoly. I, uh, this objective of the study is to take three cosmetic industries, top three Indian cosmetic industry, like me, L'Oreal, India, and Kalaba. And uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, study will analyze how product innovation helps the industry to gain 
competitive advantage over others and this is the main characteristic of monopolistic competition if the company bring the differentiated product in the market how it is gaining the uh, competitive advantage over other countries uh, but uh, actually there are so many products available now in uh, uh, nowadays so it was not possible to take uh, a uh, single view of a uh, single cosmetic and, and my study was limited to three these cosmetic uh, industries only so thus 20 participants came into limelight to give me the opportunity to analyze their responses this i have given the uh, giving you the in brief the swot analysis of three cosmetic industry in lakme the threat was uh, like because lakme is the uh, purely indian company established uh, at the time of independence there was a threat of international players and uh, like me is said to be the inexpensive product in the indian market there was a competition with the international products l'oreal india that was a france uh, paris product but came into india after 1991 there was a threat of cash crunch local suppliers kalabar again uh, uh, invented by modi uh, samir modi and uh, there was again the competition with the foreign players uh, there, this was the quarter five analysis in cosmetic industry. Industries, the I took it in the cosmetic industry. How rivalry among competitive uh, competing firms? Like I have written, monopolistic competition, which cosmetic industry ko characterize karta hai, shows an aggressive price war among competitors. Threat of new entrants. There is always a, a threat of new entrants into this market because there is a monopolistic competition. There is no entry bar in this market like olig oligopoly. There is a need of large capital requirement, but still, if the company bring the uh, differentiated product, easily can enter into this market. There is always a threat of substitute product in country like India. The uh, customer choose the inexpensive. They have the some sense uh, like uh, sense to have the inexpensive product, but they want to buy ladies uh, uh, want to buy but inexpensive product. So there is always a threat of close substitute in this market. Bargaining power suppliers, the foreign companies that are coming, they had the problem of this uh, supply local suppliers bargaining power because here the price is determined by the buyer's power to influence the price. They can put the pressure on businesses to provide them high quality product and this increase their price greater than marginal cost. They have to keep the price greater than marginal cost, but Please still come to the conclusion, madam. Yeah, okay. And uh, this is the conclusion, uh, sir, uh, uh, took the response from companies LACME. Uh, LACME is gaining the advantage because of its product innovation is gaining the advantage over other companies. But after Corona, or you can say uh, after uh, the introduction of organic products into the market, the uh, stage where LACME took 20 to 30 years to reach, but these organic products like Mama Earth and Just Hubs took just four to five years to reach that level. This means how product innovation give the competitive advantage to the company. Uh, this is the conclusion of my study. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, the only observation, madam, is that uh, your title of paper appears to be very, very vague. You could have just uh, correlate your title with the objective of your research paper. You know that you have just uh, mentioned that a study of the three top cosmetic companies. Huh. Yes, sir. On product innovations. Okay, product. Okay, okay. So okay, sir. this should this should be reflected in the title. Right? Okay, sir. Okay, thank okay, sir. Okay. Thank, okay. Thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Very nice presentation by Dr. Poonam, ma'am. Uh, the next presenter is at serial number nine, Akwam Shah Fahimji. Yeah, Akwam Shah Fahimji, please you can continue. Uh, good evening to From all. The Pradesh Lucknow campus research. Uh, yeah. I'll just. Uh, Share my screen. Is it uh, visible? Is my screen visible? Yes, it is. It is visible. Okay. So uh, this is a review paper uh, uh, about criminal propensity in young uh, in adolescent and young adults. Uh, the uh, crime rate has drastically increased in the past decades. So if you talk about the latest statistics, the juvenile crime rate has increased. 30% from 2019 and 2020. So this, this uh, uh, makes the, the cost and the reason for this has been studied for a while now under criminology, a dedicated field of science. And uh, so this makes this age a very risk factor. And um, so uh, the, two, uh, the two basic uh, uh, approaches to uh, studying criminal behavior 
are criminal propensity approach and opportunity approach criminal propensity approach basically argues that criminals exhibit certain qualities or traits to commit a crime and this is concerned with the individual differences among population that increases the likelihood of offending and uh, studies have dedicated to the field uh, find the major risk factors for uh, delinquent behavior was identified as parenting style and peer pressure uh, so uh, the the three uh, uh, so to study the parenting style there were you can say there were three kinds of uh, types of parenting style authoritative authoritarian parent and permissive parenting style then uh, on uh, uh, with uh, the the review that i uh, did uh, uh, help me find that scientists have studied criminal propensity in various in several different and uh, uh, aspects and with different variables their impact their relationships however the studies have been limited to convicts especially if you talk about the case of india the studies have been limited to convicts the studies have been, uh, that have been done on criminal propensity are majorly on convicts and then uh, if you talk about age factor then the age that has been associated that has been studied a lot has been either the adult if you talk about or the child or 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 that or that age the young adults uh, have been have not been focused upon uh, that much if you talk about the field of criminal propensity uh, so um the attempt to change their you know it has been said that uh, this age adolescent has been you know uh, they children uh, to have the major concern of you know being identified and accepted by their peer groups so they attempt to change their attitudes values behaviors to conform to these uh, of their peers creating a great impact on the minds so often this age is associated with a lot of aggression and uh, intolerance so this is due to the very fact that you know there is a pretentious personality that they have to portray to their peers and then there is a real personality that they have to they they, they portray in front of the parents so basically they are torn apart between parental values and peer values so uh, the 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 review actually reveal that the, the the impact of parents and the impact of peer uh, of peer pressure on the to overall personality of the individual so the implication of my study is implication and recommendation of my study is that these aspects the aspects of parenting the role of peer pressure the role of parenting style in the in the criminality or the deviant behavior what role do they play and how much role do they play then the study of criminal propensity should not only be limited to criminal convicts but also there there should be a study done on general population especially adolescents and young adults so the, so the study of uh, you know should or study should also be dedicated to gender differences in relation with criminal propensity the implication of my study like we all talked about the this this should do something for the social uh, for the society is that the study is conducted with help in understanding the causes and the major factors that are responsible for criminal or deviant behavior or the increasing violence among young adults and then preventions and interventions could be planned according please conclude yeah. thank you thank you uh as you have mentioned that it was a review paper of course a uh, lot of scope is there uh for further empirical and database study particularly you may collect primary data in the different issues and can for the of course it was a good attempt but uh, uh, Empirical studies for the required. Okay, thank you. Well, no, no. Thank you, thank you so much. Next presenter is at serial number eleven, Bishak Singh. Yes, sir, Bishak Ji, please sir. unmute. So. Vishak ji, there is a network problem from your side. We are not able to listen you. Uh, your voice is breaking, actually. I think there is a connectivity issue from your side. So you can show your slides to, uh, with the permission of Mehta sir, because yes, there is a very severe network. Yes, 
sense you are not audible to just just uh, very quickly scroll your slides so that we can see the presentation right. quick next next please next one okay next one okay next one fine 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 We wish if you could have presented the paper, which uh, appears to be good study. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ravidi, take up the next paper, please. Thank you. Next presenter is Anand Prakash Ji, serial number 10, PhD research scholar from University of Delhi. Anand Ji, please unmute. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, please continue. Uh, very warm regard to everyone present here. Thanks to the whole team of International Conference on Multidisciplinary Research and Innovation in Finance, Study Management, Economics, Education, Humanity, and Social Science for organizing this conference. My topic is bicameralism in parliamentary federations. So basically, I'm trying to discuss the how bicameralism is an integral model, a crucial component of governance in parliamentary federations worldwide. The main point I'm trying to highlight in this paper is that in unitary state, the function of bicameralism is different it has a different purpose. The main purpose there is to, the main purpose is to stop any ill-conceived or any hasty legislation. In case of unitary state, the bicameral legislature is kept to avoid any hasty legislation it is made sure that every legislation is gone through rigorous process in both chambers. <coughs> but it has a different role in federal countries. In federal countries, the logic behind two chambers is that second chamber will be, will be acting as a representative body of the constituent units. So the second chamber in case of second chamber in case of parliamentary federations act as a federal second chamber. It acts as a house of the state. If I will take examples of since in my in my paper, I am dealing with parliamentary federations. There are two kinds of federations. There can be a presidential federation like US, there can be a parliamentary federation. And in this paper, I will deal with parliamentary federations. And I have given a very, I have classified both parliamentary federation and presidential federation in my paper, which can be seen there. So in parliamentary federations, it has another important role. Because in parliamentary federations, 
the executive as well as legislature is closely linked and in parliamentary federations since the role of legislature is intertwined with executive it is also example of executive federalism and in parliamentary federations the role of second chamber becomes more important because it has it because the lower chamber in lower lower chamber is intertwined with the government so anand ji anand ji just it, it hold more power to anand, the anand ji just tell us about the structure of paper and the the, the conclusion only since, yeah uh, okay 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 yeah so the structure of paper is like this that i have discussed the in, in i have discussed the difference between parliamentary federation and presidential federation i have discussed the bicameral legislature in both the both both kinds then the main point but what i am trying to highlight through this paper is the is that that second chamber plays a very important role in parliamentary federations second chamber is the is act the second chamber has a very is, is chamber of regional representation it is the chamber of representing the, the representing the regional aspirations it is the chamber of constituent units and what i see in many federations like india that in doing so the second chamber is not doing that not fulfilling that objective of bicameralism the main point i am trying to highlight is that the wherever there is a parliamentary federation there should by there by cameral legislature should have a more federal second chamber where the second chamber should highlight the issues of a state thank you thank you thank you next thank you thank you mr abhishek the next presenter is at serial number 12 arathi panikat from punjab lovely professional university punjab please unmute ma'am yes sir am i audible sir yes, yes. you are audible okay sir okay i'll share my screen Sir, is my screen being visible? Yes, it is. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, good evening to one and all present here. My name is Arthi Panikat, and my topic is academic interventions for developing adaptive behaviors in children with autism spectrum disorder: a systematic literature review. I have made this work under the supervision of Dr. Siddhi Sue. Now, what is autism spectrum disorder or ASD? It is a neurological and developmental disorder that arises out of a fusion of genetic and non-genetic or environmental influences. It can give rise to continuous challenges in communication, social behavior, and various other skills that are required for efficient living. The major objective of this work was to explore and analyze the diverse interventions that resulted in the development of adaptive behaviors in the children with autism spectrum disorder. Here we have done yeah so here we have done a systematic literature review where 49 articles of relevance were collected that were published between the years 2000 and 2020. Not... now we yeah. yeah yeah please continue yeah okay sir now we will move okay so i'm i'm being audible no sir yes you are okay sir okay sir so now we will move on to the result and discussion part of the review since autism is a spectrum disorder the capabilities and drawbacks that each affected individual uh, possesses will be different from one another and this usually creates a lot of worry in people but it has been seen that early diagnosis followed by appropriate interventions can bring down the severity of these challenges out of the referred materials 11 dealt with the interventions to improve communication it was found that systematic interventions 
like enhance the approach and employment to led to the development of their social as well as language skills there were uh, nine materials that dealt with reading disabilities in children with asd and it was found that direct intervention uh, direct instruction sorry direct instruction method as well as computer assisted instruction can help in the development of particular of this particular adaptive behavior two works focused on the development of writing and here too cai proved to be handy four materials that were taken up were based on developing the problem solving skills of uh the children and it was found that depending upon the problem physical or technological intervention interventions could be adopted there were 13 materials that dealt with improving the academic performances of children with asd and it was concluded that both human as well as technological interventions can be adopted depending upon the task at hand or depending upon the subject at hand 10 of the materials display the ways of uh ways to upgrade uh, social skills which can be uh, brought about by peer interactions or even through mobile learning now talking about the research gap that was found it was found that there were very few researches done in which the interventions of parents were solely regarded um uh, in developing the behavior adaptive behaviors of autistic children thereby i would like to conclude by saying that autistic community should not be um, cornered they should not be neglected we all should grow by helping each other grow only then there will be inclusiveness in the society and the world will develop as a whole i would like to conclude uh, again by uh, just sharing the small poem that i had come across in google it's a very beautiful uh, portrayal of the emotions of a child having uh, asd it says i am a child with autism my sensory perceptions are disordered be patient with my limited vocabulary focus and build on what i can do rather than what i can't do help me with social interactions try to identify what triggers my meltdowns i am very visually oriented show me how to do something rather than just telling me last and most important love me unconditionally so um, as i said this is a very beautiful portrayal of the emotion of a child having asd it is a reminder to us that we have to love them unconditionally we have to be very patient with them and also we have to uh, focus on their positive points on their thank strengths you. rather than thank their you. weaknesses thank, thank you. you the only thank observation you, is that uh, since it was a paper based on the literature review you could have yes, Table as you classified it during your presentation of the different okay. uh, publications or the uh, material that you have reviewed, it could have been okay. a tabular form at least. So that okay, people... sir. Actually, I didn't add the table in the PowerPoint. Yeah. I have made yeah. the table for the paper. It could have been done. So, yeah. It could have been okay, elaborated. Sir. It could have been done. Thank you. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice presentation. The serial number fifteen, Miss Nikki Kumari, research scholar from Department of Applied Economics and Commerce, Patna University, Patna. Please unmute, Nikki ji. Good evening, the organizing committee. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Nikki Kumari. I'm just uh, showing my screen here. So my screen is visible. Uh, good evening, visible. everyone. My topic is mobile banking. A need on growth of mobile banking. Uh, my name is Nikki Kumari, a research scholar from the Department of Applied Economics and Commerce, Patna University, under the supervision of Dr. Professor Mahesh Chandra Prasad, sir, head of the department. At present, the influence of technology is pervasive, and world without using it cannot be visualized. Innovation in various places across the world have made people's life easy, simple, and relaxed. As far as the research design is concerned, it is basically depend upon the literature review and secondary data. The paper has been designed to study the concept of mobile banking, covering the trend of mobile banking in current era, growth of mobile banking in India. As we know, mobile banking is growing ever faster rate in India. 
as key points from my abstract, mobile banking is a need of the era. It's an innovative way of rendering banking services, financial services to the customers. Banks in India now understand that technology is only the enabler to bring change in the society. A massive shift has been recorded in the banking sector that both customers and banks shifted towards digital and branchless banking system. The constant developments in the innovation and electronic system have shifted towards growth of standard of products and services. Mobile banking can be considered as one of the services which can be referred to as a precious innovation for this modern age. Objective of my study is to study the reasonable factors that influence the customer why they are opting mobile banking rather than traditional banking. As far as the meaning of mobile banking is concerned, mobile banking refers to digitalization of traditional banking services through telecommunication networks and digital applications. It okay, is a process of part, connecting with... Uh, just hold, please uh, come to the conclusions. Because, uh, um, okay, so I'm con Digital payment revolution has been taking place in the banking sector. Digitalization has become one of the top priorities for banks in India. The banking system in India transformed from traditional bank to digitalized banking system. Mobile banking is one of the key pillars to empower India digitally. If I talk about advantages, it may be concerned as anywhere, anytime banking, the convenient mode of banking, easy to understand, easy to operate. And the security and the safety measures are, are only the drawbacks of mobile banking system. India. If I talk about the future of mobile banking, it's very hopeful. The need of the era and growth of mobile banking in past few years has been recorded year to year is very growing highly. Uh, finding of my study suggested that in the last 10 years, the country has witnessed unique innovations in the mobile banking sector as the younger generation blessed with the innovation of smartphone, advancement of technology, upgraded the mobile operating system, utility application that helped us to adopt this traditional uh, modern-based technology system rather than traditional banking. I'm concluding my uh, PowerPoint as mobile banking in India is speedily growing with the RBI and Government of India initiatives. Transactions through mobile bank devices have been increasing during the demonetization phase, as well as it has been reported in COVID-19 phase also. The Government of India, along with its regulator, pushes the society to adopt mobile banking rather than physical and uh, plastic money uh, or by always. Banks have to adapt technology to beat the customer in this, to beat the competitors, to survive in the competitive market also. Thank you so much for the opportunity and regards from my side. The only observation is that by research... Right, Sorry, sir. I, uh, just a minute, please listen. The observation is that while writing a research paper for any conference, you have to be a bit specific, you know, that the growth of mobile banking and... Uh, the current status appears to be very, very general. So you have to much specific in writing a research paper for the conference, number one. And secondly, you must give the research methodology also in your paper. These are the okay. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nikki ji. The next presenter is at serial number 16. Ms. Sakshi Gupta, is a scholar, Doon University, Dehradun. Yes, Sakshi ji, please unmute. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, your voice is getting very slow. Low voice. Am I more audible this time, sir? No, 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 it's okay, yeah. Okay, so I'll just start by uh, sharing my screen quickly. I hope this uh, screen is visible to everyone. Okay, so uh, for... Today's conference, my topic is psychological contract, employee commitment, and organizational citizenship behavior at workplace. The three variables that we've taken for the study, all the three are related directly to the behavior of people at workplace. And especially because the education sector is 
a sector that helps derive the workforce for the other sectors. So we have tried getting to the very main sector that is the education sector. And being myself in Uttarakhand, I have taken the study area to be Uttarakhand itself. The reason or the context of this study is that behavioral studies for educational sectors are not been much in the past, especially for topics like psychological contract and OCB, that is the organizational citizenship behavior. Secondly, understanding that Uttarakhand is taken as a place of multiple and various institutions. And we have teachers from across borders teaching here. So this will give us even more insight of how the education industry is working for now. I'll quickly give an update about uh, all the three variables in very, very simple manner. When I talk about psychological contract, we are talking about two people. One is the employer and the other is the employee. So when both of them come in and contract, they have a written agreement which will give the roles and responsibilities. But there are a lot be, uh, you know, beyond the contract that we expect. That is the unwritten contract that, that is more about expectations and obligations. So that is the psychological contract. After many years of study, this is what people have come across by mentioning this as an iceberg um, of the psychological contract, that when we talk about work and we talk about pay, this is just one very small aspect of psychological contract. There are a lot of different factors that will make sure how you are perceiving yourself at work and how your employer is perceiving you at work. Second variable is employee commitment. Yes, of course. The way I feel committed or belong to my organization will have a direct relation to how I am putting up with my organization in terms of productivity, in terms of not leaving the organization really quick. Now, when, I, when we talk about the past studies, it has made it very clear that employee commitment has been divided into three sorts of commitment, effective, that how much affection or belongingness I have to the organization, normative, I should do this for the organization or I do not need to do this for the organization. And continuous, of course, is the cost and benefit. What if I leave right now? My promotion is pending. What if I get a good offer outside? Uh, Sakshi ji, you have to be a bit brief also. Right? You, because, sure, sir. Uh, because of time constant, please. Sure, sir, sure. So um, just the last constraint is OCB. That's the organization citizenship behavior. What you do beyond your reward system? The study is looking across, sir, that there are three variables that we've taken and we are trying to see what would be the effect of psychological contract and employee commitment on OCB. Both of these psychological contract and employee commitment are taken as the behavioral aspects looking into what would be the disposition at work at whole. The proposed data collection and research methodology is that the data would be collected specifically from um, Uttarakhand only, we will make sure that colleges from both Kumaung and Garhwal region are taken into consideration. Plus private and public both are taken so that if required, we can make a comparative study later on uh, as in what would be the, um, what I should say, the basis that we can find common between them. And the implications, uh, why I find this study would be helpful for the education sector as um, the ARII ranking that is coming up on the basis of innovation for the education sector. Any teacher or any faculty group that is working for any education um, institution will always be derived more to work for this ranking if they are more and more committed or have more good relationship between their organization and their own personal goals. So the implication is that will help us go ahead bring out better ranking for all the institution once we are able to find the flaws in the behavioral aspects. Is it completed? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. For now. The right. only obs observation is that you could have given the research methodology. Uh, of course, you have given here. Uh, but where is the sampling uh, basis How much samples you have collected and from where? 
sir we are uh, expecting to collect approximately 400 of the sample we okay. are still um, into the data collection that is why i mentioned proposed okay, the fine. reason of this is the colleges just start getting back to offline okay, working fine 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 thank you god thank you it was a good paper thank you thank you, thank you so much thank you so much yes the next presenter is at serial number 19 Meghna Mittal, this is scholar from IIS University. Meghna ji, please unmute and uh, please show your video because the only the fan is. Uh, this is what I'm trying to do. Actually, there are two webcams, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm unable to flip the web webcam to my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. you can stop your video and you can continue just a second sir i'll just share the screen your screen is visible okay perfect just a second sir this overview is one word instead of you have given the break <laughs> yes sir um uh, Namaskar everyone. Um, I'm Meena Mittal, and I'm a PhD scholar from IIS Delhi University, Jaipur. So, title of my paper is Aspiration and Self Learning Behavior via Sense of Coherence Among Students. So, uh, during these changing academic and environment, students must be able to identify the skills as well as the ones that are need to be improved. so alongside cognitive skills non cognitive skills are equally important for the student performance so here uh, my objective was to in, to investigate uh, the mediating effect sense of coherence on relationship between aspiration and self handicapping behavior among school students the variables in the study are the independent variables are aspiration which includes in, intrinsic and extrinsic variables and sense of coherence Uh, and dependent variable is the self handicapping behavior so very quickly the the variables aspiration is basically the ability to distinguish and set future goals as well as to be inspired to work towards these goals sense of coherence is a personality trait which is expected to be a predictor of person's orientation and internal strength self handicapping behavior is the process where a person creates or chooses obstacles for predicting their own self esteem they blame their failure on external circumstances and not on their own lack of ability so it's basically a, a, a way that they can own, they can protect their own uh, self esteem and uh, self worth so the statistical tools used were aspiration index sense of coherence scale and self handicapping behavior scale so the hypothesis which we which i was working towards was the sense of coherence will mediate the relationship between aspirations and self handicapping behavior the sample was of a 9 to 12 standard both girls and boys and the sample size was around 320 students so the findings revealed that intrinsic aspiration in self handicapping behavior uh, is um, minus 0.1656 lower as mediated and similarly for the extrinsic aspiration as well um this was the result table that we uh, worked on the conclusion was sense of coherence acts as a mediator between aspiration and self handicapping behavior the implications are definitely when we consider the results into perspective counselors can help students to consider their internal strengths to elevate themselves from situations that jeopardize their behavioral responses towards self handicapping behavior and also incorporate the skills of aspiration to improve their behavior responses Thank you so much, sir. It was a good paper. Where you gathered the data? I'm sorry, sir. From where you gathered the data? The so data was uh, from private and government school students in Jaipur, Rajasthan itself. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Thank you good so paper. much. Good Thank paper. you so much. serial number 21 grisha chopra again student from ias university yes grisha ji please un unmute 
you can start on your video also. Yes, Grisha, please continue. Is my screen visible? Yes, it is. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Krishna Chopra, and uh, I am from IIS University. I am going to present my paper, which is titled Revisiting Female Inferiority, the Impact of Gender Stereotype and Malicious Envy on Dependency, uh, which I had I did under the supervision of Ms. Santo Chetia. Uh, so the in dependent, independent variable of my study was gender stereotype and malicious envy. And the dependent variable was Cinderella complex and inferiority complex. Since history prevails, women have uh, encountered uh, various stereotypes that uh, instill in them dependency and inferiority. Uh, all the women have moved forward and made their place in working sector. Even then, they face various challenges that make them uh, question their competence and uh, worth. So this study aims to better understand these challenges and explore their core dependence on working women. So objective of my study was to assess the relationship between gender stereotypes, Cinderella complex, inferiority complex, and malicious envy, to assess the impact of gender stereotype on Cinderella complex and inferiority complex, to assess the impact of malicious envy on Cinderella complex and inferiority complex. The hypothesis of the study was there is a significant, uh, there is a relationship between gender stereotypes, Cinderella complex, inferiority complex, and malicious envy, Gender stereotype predicts Cinderella complex and inferiority complex, and malicious envy uh, predicts Cinderella complex and inferiority complex. The sample of the study uh, was 84 working women of the age group of 25 to 40 years. We uh, did this, uh, did this uh, using purpose of sampling. It is a causal research design. The measurement tools used were gender stereotype scale, Cinderella complex scale, inferiority complex scale, and dispositional envy scale. The statistical analysis were uh, descriptive, correlation, and regression analysis. The results showed that there is a po significant positive relation between all of these variables, all four of them. Uh, gender stereotype predicted Cinderella complex uh, at 31.7% variance. Uh, gender stereotype predicted inferiority complex at 15.8% variance. Malicious envy predicted inferiority complex at 21.9% variance. And malicious envy predicted Cinderella complex at 22.9% variance. So all the three hypotheses were accepted in the study. It can be concluded that increase in gender stereotype in malicious envy will significantly increase Cinderella complex and inferiority complex in working women. Uh, it uh, so the implications are that as the study was conducted on working women, so interventions such as mindfulness, uh, assertiveness training, and also leadership skills can be inculcated in, inculcated in working women. Parenting was one of the major reasons for the development of Cinderella complex. So interventions can be proposed to educate the parents uh, as well as women about it. And some certain measures can be taken to increase the self-esteem of women, which will in turn decrease their inferiority complex. The suggestion for further studies are that a comparative study between married and unmarried working, uh, women can be done and also working and non-working women. Uh, the study can also be conducted between the women living in joint family and nuclear family. And also Cinderella complex can be assessed on mothers as well. Uh, various other cultures can be included in the study. The limitation was that uh, the study was conducted on a very small sample. So it can be extended to a larger sample. And uh, other limitation was that it is from uh, just one region, which is Rajasthan. So study can be extended to other thank you, regions thank of India as well. Thank you. Thank you. It was a very good paper. I must appreciate you because uh, in terms of the structure of the entire paper and the topic that you have taken was very good. I believe that you you, uh, perhaps at your final stage of submitting your research, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. It was a very good paper, very good study. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much, Risha ji. The next presenter is at serial number 22, Kamal Singh, research scholar from Rama University, Kanpur. Yes, Kamal ji, please unmute. 
Yes, sir. I am audible. Yes. Good evening to all of you. Sure. Now I am visible now, sir. Uh, my topic is international uh, study of digital advertising strategies in, uh, in FMCG sector of rural India. Uh, my name is Kamal Singh, research scholar, Department of Commerce and Management, Rama University, Kanpur. Uh, the uh, abstract of this paper that explore uh, the uh, digital advertising of FMCG in India, rural in rural scenario. The study focuses on modern concept of digital advertising, which has incorporated a tremendous change in the way of promotion of FMCG sector in last one decade. Due to the change of technology like internet, 3G, 4G, smartphones, etc., the way we communicate has changed in the last 10 years. A few years back, people were unknown and unable to buy online even we were unable to think what we would buy uh, groceries furniture clothes online but now we can book our hotels trains flights etc tickets etc and in this paper uh, we explore about the digital advertising in india and its effect the significance of digital advertising in the current scenario of the rural india Introduction. The digital advertising is promoting products and service, services using digital media to reach consumers in a relevant manner, personal and cost effective. Digital advertising includes many of the strategies contained within the category of internet advertising. Uh, uh, we can see that uh, in, uh, we can promote our products in uh, social media like uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, uh, and nowadays we can see that short, uh, the trend is short video and the uh, marketers are uh, encasing that opportunity and placing the advertisements on uh, in between that videos. So uh, this is the very uh, popular uh, way to promote our products. And uh, the uh, basic uh, benefits of the digital advertising, it, it is very convenient, less hassles, more informative, low cost audience size is bigger than traditional marketing. Relationship building is very easy and effective and efficient compared, compared than the traditional advertising. Quick adjustment to the market conditions. We can change our marketing programs according to the competitors or the marketing market scenarios. Research methodology, objectives of the study to compare the trust level of traditional advertising and digital advertising on the consumer point of view. And second is to find the effectiveness and digital of digital advertising reach and creation of awareness. Third one is to find the reliability of digital advertising, recall and rem remembrance. Uh, and the descriptive research has been used to clarify the doubts about the online advertising, it give us a clear picture on the effectiveness and reliability on online advertising compared to the traditional form of advertising. In this study, the secondary data has been collected using secondary data sources like websites, magazines, online journals, etc. On the data analysis, uh, uh, on, on the point of uh, trust of the customer digital advertising, we can see that the fast growing uh, uh, is the digital advertising marketing in India. In starting from 2011 to 2015, is it, it is growing very fast. And inter, internet users by uh, country in 2016, India uh, was in second place after China uh, for, for using internet. And internet users in India in their local language. Uh, we can see here, English internet users uh, are less than local internet users. That's why the Google and all other uh, uh, means players are uh, launching uh, their softwares, their architecture in local languages or regional languages. So uh, 
by 2021, 536 million users uh, are uh, using in their local languages. Effectiveness of digital advertising, we can see that here the comparison of men and women, they are using uh, mobile uh, like chats, uh, social networking, app stores, uh, email, others. In this uh, chart, we can see and online advertising sectors in India. Uh, these are the major sectors. Uh, please conclude where... now. Okay, sir. So, okay. Conclusion of overall study is the massive Indian market is changing in fast, including market internet access is uh, mainstreaming among the professional and the use of mobile is intensifying with upgradation of the 3G and 4G networks. The pace of change continue to the rapid with the digital channels constantly growing in the volume and strength. More people spend more time online every year and the digital tools and sites they are used play uh, ever growing role in their lives. Smart marketers keep on top of the scale of the change, ensure their marketing strategies and touch point mirror where the consumers is spending their time. There are 250 million mobile connections in rural India, more than the urban parts of the country, representing the huge opportunity for reach consumers on the move. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Next presentation. Thank you so much. Serial number 23. Sruti Maha Mohapatra, Research Scholar, School of Management, Lucknow. Please unmute. Yes, sir. Sir, good evening, sir. My topic is role of electronic word of mouth in brand promotion and social media. Interest. Social media marketing is the use of, it is the process of creating tailored content for each social media platform to drive engagement and promote a business. An electronic word of mouth is the consumer's information sharing and extends about a product. Objective by the year. Objective of this study is it is to know the role of e electronic word of mouth and brand promotions. Review of literature. I'm not detailing about the re review of literature. This so that there is a positive association between brand royalty and out of stores promotion such as company. It concluded that brand image has an important influence on purchase intentions of mobile through EOM. And it Manjur, these authors reported that the store royalty increased attitude towards promotion. It, and this, uh, according to the author's evidence, so that there was positive association between brand royalty and brand promotions, con consumer desire to use promotion course purchasing more units of the product than they use, they use regularly. And the table of the literature review, according to the author, the key drivers for consumers involving themselves in e electronic word of mouth was the need for the social interactions, economic incentives, and many brands have introduced referral system in which the consumers of the brand recommend to the friends and family and gets rewarded in uh, research gap please research gap research methodology i am taking secondary data like journal ebooks and records area of this study is lucknow city sampling Madam, what is the research research gap ka hai aapka? what ma'am what's research sir? research gap after research methodology what research gap you reveal this uh, research gap, uh, I haven't found the research gap. Then when there is no research gap, then what's the need of a study then? Anyway, batai aage. Okay. Now findings of this study indicate that the electronic word of mouth has a direct significant positive contribution to brand promotion with the characteristics. 
electronic water mod is one of the most effective factors affecting brand promotion in search of information about the product through other consumers opinion on the in the electronic water mod has a become a source of credible and reliable source information that consumers depend on before making a purchase conclusion electronic word of mouth have an outstanding influence is used on social media to consumer purchasing towards brands is depending on online review quality and credibility and quantity which would ill different behavior in purchasing intentions and these are the differences thanks thank you next paper please Thank you so much. Actually, with the permission of Professor Mehta sir, I want to uh, convey one thing that our association main purpose is to provide opportunity to everyone. The thing is, we don't select any papers. We want to give chance to everyone, every scholar, every student, every teacher, because we don't want to let down anybody. So don't think that. this this is the paper this is the paper we give chance to everyone and this is our main motive and in our every conference we give chance to everyone so the next presenter is dr soni keval ramani assistant professor of amity university yes please unmute yes i'm here i'll just share my ppt okay. i hope my ppt is visible to you all yes ma'am a very good evening to all the participants here and uh, professor anil mehta sir okay i want to talk about dark emotional intelligence basically it is one of the concepts that have been uh, less researched especially in india let's understand what uh, emotional intelligence when it goes bad becomes an asperger individual may not know what you are feeling and when we come to dark emotional intelligence it's like a psychopath who does not care what you are feeling and that is the main difference that uh, happens here but where does the power of a person understanding the other person as an individual lie here is the quote that i would like to share with you all the power of emotions were recognized by one of a very influential leader of the 21st century and he had spent years on studying the emotional effects of how he conveys with others basically through his body language one thing that he had practiced the most was his hand gestures he has analyzed the images of his moments he has allowed him to become uh, that spell binding public speaker this is one person that we all know he was adolf hitler we are talking about dark emotional intelligence and that is important here hence the mention of this name actually emotional quotient is morally neutral two of the very important uh, reviews that I would I would like to share here because of the paucity of the time I am not going to the detail there is a theoretical and empirical support for dark ei yes there are tools available davis and nichols 2016 they have also come up with dark ei teams they are on the lines of intrapersonal and interpersonal domains that we generally talk about in reference to emotional intelligence and they have talked about the negative aspects of it again Times Magazine. The whole issue of emotional intelligence started in 1995 when Times Magazine has on its cover what is the new IQ? Is it EQ? And now in 2018, the Times Magazine has come up with there's a dark side to emotional intelligence. So this is how we have come from emotional intelligence to dark emotional intelligence. Coming to the present study now, uh, as a part of this research, uh, I have interviewed five juvenile delinquents in jails. this is a case study method that i have employed it is an ongoing study so i'll be mentioning the results that i have found so far which are in support of dark emotional intelligence and how the results can be misused by many as a result of these five in depth interviews which took days and days together for one for one person one uh, juvenile delinquent to be interviewed the conclusion that was reached was that these when they were in school they were very good manipulators they had manipulated their parents they had manipulated their teachers they said that they had learned the art of uh, understanding how and when the other person will react emotionally to a situation they even mentioned that as a part of the syllabus they had these emotional personality development components i'm not going to mention the boards or the schools here 
and as a part of it they have also learned a few tricks as a result of these classes that were going on so called training classes that were going on and which has actually helped them to manipulate their teachers and their parents and as a result for a longer period of time these kids were not caught doing something wrong also but finally yes they were caught uh, that is why they were in those uh, juvenile delinquents homes the implications of these kind of research like in as it's an ongoing research and i'll be meeting some more uh, students before i give the uh, full results of this study but the implications so far are we are having these blind trainings on emotional intelligence at various places organizations prisons schools universities they are a part of a solid development curriculum there has to be a rethink on this what are we doing because emotional intelligence in wrong hands is like a tool that can go wrong much empirical work is required in india because the researches i can find were all few researches that i could find were conducted in the west ours is a collectivist culture what is done in the west is based more on the individualistic way of life that they have but what impact such training such in, uh, blind increasing of emotional intelligence can have in india is still to be seen long term effects need to be studied uh, one point i would like to raise from this platform is positive psychology when it started at moment it said that the medical model has totally ignored the strength part now time has come when when we are talking about positive psychology we are not understanding to what extent these strengths are to be taken also because there is a limit every knowledge has its uses and its abuses and that also includes emotional intelligence so before going blindly for these trainings before going blindly equipping people wrong kind of people with this kind of information to manipulate and play with uh, other people's lives and their money and commit different kind of crimes there is a need for all of us as psychologists as uh, uh, you know as um, hum humanitarian as behavioral scientists to have a peek and an understanding of this concept that's all i would like to say thank uh, you it was a good study and you have taken a really new topic that is dark emotional intelligence as you said so. that your study is based on the five important case studies i think uh, to authenticate the results uh, further studies are required and you have to collect lot of definitely sir definitely empirical data also yes sir okay. yes sir thank i'll you. be doing thank that you. thank you thank you thank sir you. thank you so much next 25 k sari sasi rekha research scholar from tamil nadu Yes. So very good evening, sir. Good evening. Very good evening uh, to all the committee members and to the participants. Myself, Sasi Rekha, um, research scholar, S R M College of Arts and Science, Kattangalathu, Tamil Nadu. My topic for today's session is an entrepreneurial travel, tourism, and hospitality industry uh, possibilities and the problems faced by the entrepreneur in those industry and overview. Shall I share my screen, sir? Please share. Is my screen visible, sir? No, it is not. Even your video is also not. So is my screen visible, sir? No, it is not visible. Oh my God! Can I make an oral presentation? I guess ah, there's can, some network can, issue. You can, you can, you can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank yes. you so very much. As my topic for today's session is a, a theoretical study on entrepreneurial travel, tourism, and hospitality industry problem to possibilities. So the very basic objective of this paper is to see like how entrepreneurship is enhanced in tourism industry, and to know the charisma of the tourism business in reducing unemployment, and to elucidate the vitality of the tourism industry. as i told like entrepreneurship plays a vital role in transforming the supply of leisure and recreational opportunities it is also considered as a critical factor in tourism development both regionally and locally we we'll also try to understand the inter uh, relationship between travel tourism and hospitality industry because the uh, hospitality industry is interlinked with tourism because it targets the food recreation accommodation for those who are away from their home for longer shorter periods of time which also includes hotels restaurants and commercial activities such as guest houses snack bars and fast food establishment first of all entrepreneurship is something would like to come out with innovativeness 
who doesn't want to work with uh, work uh, to others who want to show their own innovative skills in proving their own ownership and to have their own supervision and many authors have defined the entrepreneurship in various ways among them zium peter who has said that innovation is a driving force and it also the entrepreneurs are the agents of change in the economy the entrepreneurial problems like we, we like so many problems are faced by the entrepreneur in this tourism industry first of all the developing the idea and the business concept is a very very difficult task like where they have to start the like novel idea and to raise the life blood the life blood of the business that is the principle of the to start up the business gathering a business team a loyal consumers noble employees and also of course facing the competitors like after starting up the business it is not easy to face the competition is going around us we also know we should also know how the competition is surrounded by us and how to tackle and how to make our uh, source as a, in the long run and keeping up with the industrial changes because changes are the one which is going to happen because nothing is going to be permanent of course many changes are going to be there and of course another, as an entrepreneur we should understand like the strategies what we are going to undertake to please make us sustain please conclude now yes sir yes sir and the problems and various possibilities are there and possibilities in entrepreneurship is nothing but the online hotel flight rental car booking launch online travel discussion platform travel adventures booking site online bike rental marketplace skying activity rental business and to start a own boat rental marketplace and government has also come out with various possibilities to enhance this tourism entrepreneurship and of course conclusion entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship motivates the business innovation and the economic growth entrepreneurs are exceptionally imperative in dropping the unemployment rate of the skilled and the unskilled workers so tourism industry is one of the key industries for driving the nation economy and it's also become more comprehensive of novel ideas to sustain the tourism industry a substantial long term government support extensive training research and planning processes in order to grow and flourish so entrepreneurship success leads to upliftment in the society livelihood in terms of economic gain thank you thank so you. very much for the opportunity thank given thank you thank you thank you so much the next presenter is at serial number 26 nilima sachwani research scholar from dayalbag agra uttar pradesh Yes, Nilima ji, please unmute. My screen is visible. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. I'm Mr. Neil Mastwani. I'm a research scholar of Dalbag Educational Institute. The topic of my presentation presentation is role of persuasive technology strategies in human in behavior modification. Persuasive technology is all about computerized software or information systems designed to reinforce change or save. attitudes or behavior or both without using coercion or deception persuasive technology can play three roles as tools as medium as social actors a uh, computer can increase people's ability to make target behavior by making it uh, easier to do when we use it as a tool when we use it as a media the interactive technologies can provide interactivity and narrative to create persuasive experiences to users when we okay. am i audible hello yes you are audible please continue okay uh, when we use it as a social actor computer can be persuasive by giving a variety of social classes for example reward praise etc the purpose of this is study to review and examine persuasive multimedia techniques for the past 12 years from 2022 and 6 and 6 how persuasive technology can be 
implementing object This paper provides a review of the with concern to review on the perceptive marks of persuasive technology for behavior and modification, second, outlining the technology methods, strategy, theory, and targeted behavior, stating the issues regarding the strategic study persuasive technology highlighting the future research condition total technique studies were selected based on the persuasive techniques used for behavior modification these were the studies of the researchers which were reviewed related to persuasive technology okay. uh, this these are the applications of persuasive technology according to the domain from 2010 to 2022 in which You're not audible now. You are not audible. And show the depth of the research in which the effectiveness of persuasive technology based instructional material was assessed in terms of behavior modification. Well, I think there is some. These are the M presentation. So can we consider it as presentation because there is some network issue? Yes. You are not audible, so we can consider your presentation okay. as well. Thank you, thank you. The next presenter is at serial number 27. Susmita PS, Assistant Professor from Kerala. Yes, please unmute. Please unmute. Yes, yes please. Thanks. Okay. Good evening, all of you. Myself, Dr. Susmita. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Is it visible, sir? I think it is visible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, my topic for today's conference is the relationship between suicidal ideation and physical, interpersonal, academic, and environmental factors of student stress among adolescents. We know that stress has become an inevitable world in this fast spinning technical world. It is almost experienced by everyone, irrespective of the age we are in. Stress is the sum total of a person's bodily reactions to any unfavorable stimulus, whether physical, emotional, internal, or external, that disturbs the regular state of well being. And suicidal ideation that we know that, excuse me, sir. It's a long presentation. It appears to be quite long. Please come to the objective methodology in the okay, middle. Okay. Okay. The methodology uh, of my study is, is a correlation survey method of descriptive research. The major objectives are to find out the relationship between suicidal ideation and the factors of student stress, such as physical, interpersonal, academic, and environmental factors of adolescents the total, uh, as a total sample and for males and females. And <clears throat> the data gathering tools were uh, mainly two tools were used the scale for suicidal ideation by Beck, Kovac, and Weissman. And another tool used were Student Stress Inventory by Mohammed Arif Atal, 2015. And the statistical procedures resorted were the study statistics and Pearson's product moment correlation analysis. And uh, analysis shows that for uh, these all these factors, physical, interpersonal, academic, and environmental factors for both for males as well as for females. Uh, all are highly positively correlated. So, uh, the as a uh, some total of natural, I can say the analysis of the response to the study conducted, the select sample of adolescent male and female students emanate the following results. 
their expositive relationship between suicide ideation and the factors of student stress such as physical, interpersonal, academic and environmental factors, both for uh, male as well as female. And uh, let me uh, conclude. The results of this study have revealed that the adolescence is related to uh, the psychological distress irrespective of its academic performance. These problems arise from various areas such as the relationship with parents, parent expectations, worry of the future, role as students and peer relationship and academic difficulties, etc. So teachers and we parents also need to be more aware of the multiple issues leading to suicide among our students and we have to handle them with care uh, especially during this adolescent period. Uh, this is my study, sir. Thank you. Madam, what was the hypothesis of the study and after the testing, what was the result? Yes, uh, um, uh, it, I, I hypothesis were, there, I, I hypothesis that there is positive relationship between these factors, both for male as well as for, for females. The review okay. of related literature, uh, most of the related literature, uh, uh, came to uh, from that came I came this conclusion or hypothesized that all these factors lead to suicidal ideation among our among the adolescent students. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Next presenter is at serial number twenty. Nine, Tavishi Limai. Yes, please, you can start. Tavishi ji. Um, is my screen visible? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, just a second. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Tavishi, and uh, my research topic is a retake on selfishness and altruism, a study of personal growth and contentment. I did this study under the supervision of Ms. Sankul Setia. So whenever we hear the word selfishness and altruism, uh, we always say that selfishness is negative and altruism is positive, but truth is uh, far more complex. It is not always the same. So the paradoxical form of these two are healthy selfishness and pathological altruism, which are my independent variable. My de uh, dependent variable are personal growth initiative and contentment. Uh, the rationale of the study is that uh, these two paradoxical forms, that is healthy selfishness and pathological altruism, have recently entered the empirical domain and thus it uh, becomes important for us to gain insight about this. Um, the objectives of the study is to assess the relation between healthy selfishness and content contentment, healthy selfishness and personal growth initiative, pathological altruism and contentment, pathological altruism and personal growth initiative. Uh, to assess the impact of pathological altruism on A, personal growth initiative B, contentment, to assess the impact of healthy selfishness on, patho uh, on personal growth initiative and contentment. Um, hypothesis one is uh, A, uh, healthy selfishness has a relation with contentment. B, healthy selfishness has a relation with personal growth initiative. C, pathological altruism has a relation with contentment. D, pathological altruism has a relation with personal growth initiative. Hypothesis two states that pathological altruism will predict personal growth initiative and contentment. And hypothesis three states that healthy selfishness will predict personal growth initiative and contentment. The sample of the study was 106 emerging adults, both male and female, and purposive sampling was used. The research design is a causal research design. Um, the data collecting instruments were healthy selfishness and pathological altruism scale, personal growth initiative scale, contentment with life assessment scale. Statical, statistical analysis were correlation and regression. So the correlation... Um, table shows us that healthy selfishness is significantly positively related with contentment and personal growth initiative, but whereas pathological altruism is only significantly negatively correlated with contentment. Table two shows that contentment is significantly predicted by pathological altruism at 3.5% variance. Table three shows that a personal growth initiative is significantly predicted by healthy selfishness uh, at 30.5% variance and uh, contentment is significantly predicted by healthy selfishness uh, at 23.1% variance. So we can say that hypothesis H1, A, B and C were accepted, D was rejected, hypothesis H2, A was accept accepted but H2, B was rejected and hypothesis 
H3A and B both were accepted. So uh, we can infer from this that is that um, if we increase healthy selfishness in an individual, uh, individual's contentment and their uh, initiation for personal growth will increase. But if an individual's pathological altruism is high, their uh, contentment will decrease. Uh, implication of the study is that we live in a country where we believe that giving more is better. That is what altruism is. But pathological, uh, but we know when it becomes pathological, it decreases an individual's contentment. Does this need this view needs to be eliminated? And uh, we need to conclude. Yes, sir. So we need to create healthy boundaries so that uh, individual can. Uh, have better interpersonal and intrapersonal interactions. Uh, su suggestions for further study is that further studies can be done on different population. Uh, India is a diverse place, so a cross-cultural study can be done. Um, the major limitation of the study was that majority of the data was collected from Rajasthan itself, so different regions can be studied. Thank you, sir. Just one question out of curiosity. Yes, sir. For the healthy and then selfishness, Yes, sir. Those they are, they appear to be quite contradictory. Yes, sir. Those are the paradoxical forms uh, yeah. when we talk about. So healthy yeah. selfishness is not uh, like when we say selfishness, it is negative that you are harming others. But healthy selfishness is creating boundaries and the ability to so say no. So sometimes we have to say no to others. Uh, and that is not harming others. Uh, so healthy selfishness is not harming others, but uh, being helpful, but having your personal boundaries as well. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next presenter is serial number 30. She knows M. This is scholar from Tamil Nadu. Please unmute and please start your video. Good evening. Shall I share my screen? Quickly. Is it visible, sir? Yes, it is visible. Okay. My study is a competitive study on quality of work life of teachers, self-financing, government and aided arts and science college in Calicut. The quality of work life is a quality and the provided aspects of everyone. The brings the employee's satisfaction. The employer can obtain staff physical presence at gain the place at the measured number of skilled muscular motion as per day or hour. But enthusiasm of initiative of joy, loyalty cannot be obtained, the devotion of hearts, mind, and soul. Apart, the employees provide the extended and indirect benefit of lead higher productivity result, the employee satisfaction. The quality is on, uh, one of the most important factors leads to such a favorable atmosphere. It is produced the more attempted to keep your mic a little bit away. Because it is very high, okay, okay, loud voice. Okay, okay. Now you can. Um, okay. My objective of study is to examine the relationship between selected social economic factors, the quality of work life, teachers, government aided, and self finance arts and science college in Calicut. Second objective is to analyze the determines the quality of work life, college teachers, working government aided, self finance arts and science colleges. The research methodology, the present study, the Calicut district to research objectives, the cross selection survey conducted among the 60 government and aided self-financing colleges in Calicut district. And the questionnaire designed to understand the demographic purchase, the quality of individual with the support of the organization. The secondary data were collected various articles and journals. The sampling techniques, 
the present study is drawn to the 16 adjacent sense college function in calicut district such as affiliated to calicut university uh, another uh, sample size chosen by government and self aided and self financed colleges statistical tools to use the analysis chi square correlation multiple regression analysis and also t test um, the findings of study the hypothesis were no significant difference between the quality of work life the government aided college staff members but some self financed college not giving the proper salary of the teachers and other uh, amenities is not given the conclusion of the study the objective of effective quality of work life the improved the working condition and great organization effective a win win situation a result is the quality of work life the possibility linked to the organization performance a happy and healthy employees will give a better turnover a good decision the positively contribute to the organization goal and assure the quality of work life will not be attract young and new talent also to retain existing experience talented hence the authority the college in study area advised to consider the important findings and suggestions to study to develop, develop the quality of work life the teachers and other non teaching members thank please you sir include now please conclude the 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 main conclusion of the study is the authority of college the study area the advice the consider the important findings of suggestions the presented the study to develop the quality of work life teaching and employees the reach the better highlight please conclude now thank you. okay thank you yes sir i can do it sir thank you thank you uh, ravi ji next presentation please thank you next presenter is varsha yadav serial number 31 phd scholar from department of commerce varsha ji varsha ji please unmute good evening sir yeah good evening please continue yes, so just wait i share my screen a uh, video is not available sir my screen is visible yes it is visible okay Okay, good evening everyone my topic is the um, uh, contemplation of the women empowerment and the agro economy in the mewat geographical area women have the different opportunity and challenge due to a different gender gender role and the responsibilities of the women in their the daily life women make essential contribute to agriculture and the rural activities in all the developing countries their uh, activities typically including the produ uh, producing agriculture crop branding animals processing and the preparing the foods collecting fuel water caring for the family and the etc time the use of the survey across the wide range of the country estimate that the women provide the 80 to 90% spend on the household food preparation and they also uh, contribute uh, to child care and the because of the poor infra infrastructure and the limited provision of the public services uh, in the developing countries countries in india agriculture sector play very important role in income generation activities uh, in india 70% of 70% objectives please objectives Okay, sir. So my objective is first objective to evaluate the general demography of the Mewati women, and the second objective to study the perceptions of the Mewati women about their the extent of the participant in the effectiveness agriculture. i conclude the uh, first objective 
to study the data obtained i, I collected the 400 data in my research 200 from the mewat and 200 from the haryana the respondent categories of 32 40 years age women these age group having a maximum agriculture work but then because of their the responsibility as worker as they well as homemaker as they also responsible as housewife it had it was also be seen that when the one fourth of the with more than 50 years of age also participate to the work in agriculture the main reason behind this may to provide the financial support to the family to increase the family income and for their the own survival also 28% women has less than 30% education of the mewati women reveal that majority of the women 72% were founded below the intermediate now the very less percentage of the women were founded to be graduate or the above frequency distribution of the experienced women of the mewat in agriculture and it indicate the maximum number of women have above the 20 years experience in agriculture sector majority of the women about the 60% have no any experience in the agriculture sector maximum respondent more than the 80% annual family income between 2 lakh to between 5 lakh about the 20% have their annual family income above the 5 lakh please conclude now as my conclusion as far as social demography of the mewati women is concerned the maximum women who work in the agriculture sector in mewat are the age between 30 to 50 years the education of the women uh, mewat to be low below the uh, 12th class and very less percentage in higher education annual family income of the most of the family in the mewat is just hand in to the mouth they earn to survive and saving may be negligible women also work after the marriage as they both their the family parental and in laws dependent mainly agriculture the indicate the most of the family have agriculture as source of their the income women work mainly in agriculture they work in agriculture as full time worker as they work for more than 180 days in a year personally interview revealed that most of the women work 365 days in a uh, year in agriculture sector okay thank you thank uh, you only sir. only question to you is that uh, why you have collected data from mewad and haryana uh, 200 question here you got filled from mewad and 200 from haryana uh, is it a comparative study and if it is a comparative study then what's the word comparing thing So it is a descriptive uh, study. But what's the justification of gathering data from Haryana and Mewat? Sir, actually, I am personally, when uh, uh, Mewat, I have masters me, did my own topic. So I found it very interesting. And women are related to a lot of problems. I have seen them there. So my main aim was to keep my own topic in my scholars. So I have kept my own topic in my scholars. So I have kept my own topic in my scholars. आ, वो तो बहुत अच्छा किया है लेकिन आपको जस्टिफाई करना पड़ेगा ना कि आपने मेवाड़ लिया है दूसरा हरियाणा लिया है तो इन द हरियाणा हरियाणा में मैंने मेवात को एक पर्टिकुलर एरिया लिया है हरियाणा में मेवात क्योंकि हरियाणा बहुत लॉन्ग हो जाएगा स्टेट ओके ओके ठीक है ठीक है चलिए ठीक है ओके सर थैंक यू next presenter is serial number 30 serial number 36 dipankar karmarkar karmakar from west bengal ya yeah, dipankar ji please unmute dipankar yes. ji yes you can start yes sir Yes. 
So just quite so. So. Just wait, sir. It is coming, sir. Is is, uh, is PPT visible, sir? Is PPT visible? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Very good evening to all of you, all the dignitaries present here. Today, I am going to talk about, I mean, my paper is a study on best practices in sustainable tourism in Shikim. Before going to discuss about the sustainable tourism in Shikim, we should know something about the tourism and particularly Shikim, uh, particularly Shikim tourism. <laughs> tourism is a some total uh, of relationship. You can, uh, you can just skip the introductory part about the Shikim and the tourism. Yes, sir. sir. Come to the objectives. Oh, okay, okay, sir. My objective is, uh, my objective is single, I have taken single objective, that is the main objective of the study is to understand and analyze the best practices of sustainability, sustainability of tourism practices in the state on the basis of four main criteria, that is I have chosen four criteria, that is the conservation, I mean ecotourism, community-based tourism, uh, cultural tourism, uh, commerce initiated by the state. The, the sustainability of the, uh, uh, the study is purely based on secondary data. I'm not going to treat it. The sustainability tourism can be possible by striking a balance between the need for conservation of rich biodiversity and the, on the other hand, the need for socio-economic development through the best practices of community-based tourism, cultural tourism, ecotourism, wildlife tourism. Now we discuss one by one. First of all, we come to the go tourism. Now, go tourism is the uh, responsible travel to natural areas that conserve the environment and improves the well-being of local people. The basic aim of eco tourism uh, is to promote sustainable development through resource conservation, uh, cultural revival, economic development, and diversification. Now, the government of Shikim has taken many steps, many policies and programs to tap this opportunity for the economic growth of the region and for the local employment generation. Various programs and projects have been initiated to achieve this objective. One thing uh, I, I, I addition you, I add you, that is that Lonely Planet Tourism Magazine, they declared that tourism as a favorite tour, uh, tourism destination in the world, thereby giving tourism a, a Shikime global exposure as an eco as an ecotourism destination, and I have also added one thing that is the Shikim ecotourism policy was released in the year 2011 to provide for broad uh, broad policy guidelines to all the stakeholders. And the Shikim government recognized ecotourism as the most viable and more uh, non-polluting economic instrument for many years. Now we come to the next, that is the cultural tourism. It is another important uh, uh, tourism for Shikim state. That is, the, that is the, because the Shikim has enormous potentiality to promote cultural tourism because it's wide varieties of, uh, because the state has a wide variety of customs, traditions, indigenous knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. The, the culture that develops in Shekim is the outcome of the three distinctive uh, societies and two great religious. That is the mixing of the lepcha limbo custom with those of Bodhis and Hindus has given rise to distinct culture. That is the precisely in Shekim is. Nowadays, a number of festivals uh, uh, and fairs are organized by all the ethnic groups, that is the lepcha, Hutias, uh, Limbus, and uh, Nepalis in some parts of the Shekim. And in West Shekim, he Barmi of Tourism Development and Heritage Conservation Society organizes heritage festival every year in the month of May, and they uh, and they exhibit different of uh, that is the exhibition of traditional items of domestic uses, uh, uses multi-ethnic cultural dances by all the ethnic communities, zoo, coal exhibition of traditional grain, uh, traditional storage, etc. Though the Shikim has a unique cultural heritage, but till that date, the, the state couldn't proper, uh, could not project properly its rich culture to the world. But the success of cultural tourism, fair and festival should be uh, spread it throughout the year. Now, that is the community-based tourism is another type of sustainable tourism that promotes pro, uh, poor strategies in a community setting. Its aim 
only to involve local residents in the efficient management of small tourism projects as a means of elevating poverty and providing an alternative income sources for community members. Now, we come to a conclusion that is in order to ensure sustainability of tourism in the state, an optimal symbiotic relationship between tourism and environment should be of utmost consideration. For the, for the implementation of sustainable tourism development scheme, the following important guidelines or suggestions would be suggested. My suggestion for suggestion was uh, is that, that the conservation and the optimum utilization of natural and the social resources should be of sustainable basis. Second uh, suggestion that is the participation of local people, that is the involvement of local people in the management of tourism should be encouraged and should be supported. Third one, that is the development of transportation and communication. Fourth one, that, that is the infrastructural development that should be given paramount priority and the tourism should be planned and managed within environmental limits with uh, due or uh, rigor for the long-term use of natural and human resources. Environmental awareness program should be organized on a regular basis and tourism should highlight the local activities by taking environmental uh, cost and the benefits into account. And the last, that is the disaster management team that should be active as and when it is required, as and when it is needed. And the homestay tourism should be encouraged in order to promote that homestay tourism. Government should even subsidize, subsidize loan to the community. And Thank last you. but not the least, various programs like workshop, seminar, conference should be conducted at a regular basis to discuss the problems and prospects of the Shikkim sustainable tourism development at the local, national, and the international level. My observation to our paper you, is that, uh, see, my observation is that uh, since your paper focuses on the best practices of in uh, Sikkim, and by merely gathering the secondary data from Ministry of Tourism, you cannot get the uh, what are the actual and the best practices prevailing. So I think uh, your study needs further uh, 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 research based on the interviews and the observation method, and exactly you will have to focus more on that uh, what are the best practices prevailing in Sikkim instead of just yes, sir. Yes, sir. about the policy. So I think the three should be more focused because, on the best sir, Your practices. voice is not clear to me, sir. The, that is, sir, that, that is, sir, I am uh, telling you, sir. Sikkim is endowed with uh, impressive varieties of so many uh, tourism. That is the uh, adventure tourism. That is the eco-tourism. We, we, uh, we know it very well. My only submission, yes, sir. you should focus more on what exactly is happening? What are the best practices of tourism in Sikkim? That's important. Yes, Instead of uh, okay. merely just going through the government of India reports, because yes, at the policy different and the best practices are totally different. Best, I mean, if Thank we, you. in order Thank to improve you. the sustainability, in order to yeah. uh, implement sustainability, we have to yeah. improve the eco tourism. We yeah. have to improve the uh, cultural tourism and the community based tourism. But for the focus support of government. more on the best practices. Yes, sir. It focuses on what are the best practices. Yes. Prevailing. Anyway, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Listen, Ashish has come. Ankit has come. Rubal's air plan is Rubal's. I don't know. Yes. One minute. One Next presentation. Please. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Next presenter is uh, Ms. Poonam Chahalji. Yeah, please unmute. Hello, good evening, everyone. Am serial I number audible? 33, yeah, serial number 33. After this, Vipin Kumari ji. Serial number 33, research scholar from Rohatak, Haryana. Yes, ma'am, please continue. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present here. And before that, uh, I will especially uh, want to thank you to the conference management. So because uh, I got so much, uh, you know, cooperation from them. So, sir, uh, as you know, my name is Poonam Chahal and I'm a PhD research scholar from Baba Masnath University in Rahatak. So without taking more time, I'm starting my presentation. As uh, is, is my screen uh, visible to all? Hello, it is not visible yet. It is not visible, just, 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 just.
no problem you can give the oral presentation in that case oh, okay it's coming sir it is coming okay, okay it is visible now so okay thank you sir also my topic is uh, basically before uh, spell the topic basically uh, my agenda for doing research is that that i believe uh, anybody if uh, he or she is um, on spirituality way so there will be a different uh, status of peace in his or her mind so going for spirituality there are several uh, you know roads in this world so i specified that to om shanti basically uh, the name of uh, is om shanti but uh, formal name is for that is brahma kumaris so their values ethics so if anyone is following them so how uh, one get benefit from that this is my topic and it can uh, help in uh, both work life balance uh, usually not in corporate world or in offices but at the uh, mothers and uh, you know grandmothers who are at home benefited by this so basically yeah, we all in even science is also uh, believing that yeah body and soul are different things because uh, when uh, when there is a bad situation like death we would call so uh, the body is there but the movement of body is finished that's the proven like body and soul are different so basically basically if, uh we uh, uh, please, conclude madam, please the come scenario. to the objectives please come to the objectives then the major findings oh, okay. Okay, okay okay basically sir uh, i uh, took this study that uh, through meditation we uh, we can uh, be on the path of uh, yes. peace uh, on uh, positive thoughts so we are uh, this uh, i go uh, through practical as well as uh, descriptive theory Uh, put it in the research. I uh, you got direct questionnaire filled up by almost three hundred uh, sampling I took. So uh, in conclusion, if I talk about, I got that sixty percent, uh, in fact seventy percent of the uh, public feels that yeah, if anyone is doing meditation even for just ten weeks, then uh, there will be a control of thoughts for them, and that control of thoughts. Uh, will reflect into their you know uh, positivity their relation handling strength their uh, like uh, any ch- uh, to face any challenging situation in the even in the office even in the house everywhere so if and uh, so uh, i want to introduce that meditation basically it is focusing on a single object or in deep i talk about basically it is to um, redirect your energy of your whole body to a single point that means you are focusing you are attracting all the energy to a single point so you are distracting your negative energy and you are uh, uh, you know uh, changing that also into the positive energy uh, please come to the conclusions now okay so basically i uh, usually this study uh, in several persons have, have studied on this so the result is like it help in you know to uh, come out of in, uh, several diseases also anxiety heart diseases also sleep problems also and uh, because i am not yet finished my uh, thesis but i have uh, you know uh, got filled questionnaires in that conclusion my conclusion is this yeah everybody is facing these challenges in today's running scenario so if they are saying if they are meditating daily even just for 10 minutes they get relief they can be their work will be more effective and efficient either in uh, personal life or in professional life so and i'm uh, i'm yet to be finished my studies thank you ma'am thank you thank you okay if any suggestion or any question uh, regarding this so uh, you you can I Tell think me. your study should be more data based. Who are practicing the the Brahma Kumaris uh, meditation? What is their opinion? And make it more empirical so that the conclusions will be more authentic in that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you for the suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Till number thirty thirty four. Vipin Kumari, assistant professor, IIS University. Vipin Kumari ji, please unmute.
your voice is not uh, audible your voice is not audible vipin ji maybe you have not connected with your audio the mic is not connected hello no it's not connected it's not connected okay you uh, i will call you after some time if you yes until then you can correct your audio so next presenter is yeah jaspreet jaspreet kaur jaspreet kaur ji please unmute yes please unmute please unmute please unmute yeah very good evening sir good evening i'm sharing sharing my screen topic is issues and challenges faced by digital banking users so basically as we all know what is digital banking so it is just availability of all banking transactions which were traditional now they are available online basically my topic is uh, you may uh, skip this part and please come to the objective yeah, yes sir objective of the study is to identify the basic problems and on the basis of uh, that problems i am suggesting some uh, some of the solution that can be used to for the betterment of the digital banking services so i have uh, i'll come to the point um, these are basic problems uh, that have been observed when i uh, i took a sample of 300 customers these are the problems that are faced by the digital banking users so first of all uh, long uh, customers take uh a long processing time which is uh, which is a hurdle to the digital banking and then uh, some of the don't have technical uh, technical knowledge uh, a major problem which is faced by the customers is poor network connection uh, sometimes they forget the password uh, there there is a, a risk of fraudulent activities a high transaction cost and sometimes uh, customers feel that they need a training from the bank which is not yet provided to them especially to the elder ones uh, sometimes customers feel that their atm location is not suitable and that's why they fear uh, they fear lack of confidence these suggestions which are based on the uh, uh, which are which are for the betterment of digital banking services first suggestion is that uh, the long processing time which is taken by the bank should be resolved by offering quick services and uh, to uh, to upgrade the knowledge of the customers there should be workshops and trainings to educate the customers for their for upgrading their technical knowledge and network connectivity also should be resolved by the banks uh, the location of atms should be uh, in that place that their transactions would be secure uh the i uh, one suggestion is that uh, the past for, for uh, when the customers forget their password there should be a possibility facility for biometric or ident face identification so that they can uh, they can recover their password immediately and uh, they should be uh, banks should take uh, required actions to reduce the risk of fraudulent activities as well so considering these things these suggestions the bank uh, digital banking services can be improved so that uh, customers can uh, can be satisfied more with these services the study the research metho methodology was a questionnaire it was a well structured questionnaire based Uh, which was collected in the punjab state and total sample was 300 customers thank you here the respondents profile that is your sam uh, sample profile is very important that uh, yes certainly the educational level the area the yes, ground that uh, plays an important role to to identify the issues and challenges of uh, digital banking you have not mentioned about that respondents so, uh, yeah. so i have uh, i have not included in the ppt i can yes. show you in the okay, screen okay. on the fine fine thank you thank you uh next presentation ravi ji thank you 
So next presenter is Navneet Kaur. Vipinji, uh, you can try again. Please unmute. Yes, please, can you? Hello? No, ma'am, no, 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 no. Your voice is not audible. Uh, actually, they do one thing. Just send your PPT on our mail ID. We will consider it as your presentation because there is something wrong uh, at your end in the audio. You are not audible. Or you can just move your slides so that Professor Mehta sir will see that. Just yeah, move your yeah. slides. You can just scroll the slides. Yeah. Next slide, yeah. A uh, good presentation. I wish we could have heard you also. No issue. Thank you. It will be considered as a red. Okay, sir. Thank you. The next presenter is at serial number 38, Navneet Kaur, research scholar from GNA University, Punjab. Yes, Navneet ji, please continue. Not audible again. Yes, Namneet Kaurji, not audible, not audible. I don't know what is. <laughs> sir, is it but, audible now? No, 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 yeah, yeah, no yeah. Yes, it is audible. You can speak. Yes, sir. Yes, audible. yes. Audible. Okay, sir. Uh, introduction part. Financial literacy is the ability to understand how money works. Uh, come to the objective world. straight away. Leave that because we know about Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sharing objectives. To measure the level of financial literacy, this is done by measuring both basic and advanced financial literacy. The second objective is to measure financial behavior. And the third one is to analyze the relationship between financial literacy and financial behavior. The data and method methodology for the purpose of the study, convenience sampling was followed and 100 responses were collected. The questionnaire consisted of three parts. The first part covers demographic information. The second part aims at measuring the level of financial literacy. Third part aims to analyze the financial behavior of the respondents. Cronbach's alpha test was administered to assess the reliability of the questionnaire. The result of the reliability coefficient alpha was 0.730. First is analysis of financial literacy to test the level of literacy of the respondents. 20 questions were asked to assess their knowledge on various concepts like simple interest, compounding, time value of money, inflation, credit purchase, savings interest, diversification, stock markets, bonds, debentures, mutual funds, and loan financing. For each of the questions, three options, yes, no, don't know, were given to the respondents. The answers given by the respondents were evaluated for each of the question and categorized into correct answers incorrect answers and don't know. Results of overall financial literacy, it can be summarized that the overall mean score of the respondents for correct answer was 14.43 and standard deviation was 4.02. The minimum score was two and maximum was 20. It is found that 64% of the respondents have a fairly reasonable overall financial literacy score as they have answered more than two thirds of the questions correctly. 3% of the respondents have answered less than one third of the questions correctly and have a low overall financial literacy. The results of basic financial literacy, the mean score of the respondents for basic literacy was 5.97 and standard deviation was 1.50. 75% of the respondents have a score higher than the mean value. The respondents were grouped into three categories, those with low, moderate and high level of knowledge. It is observed that 68% of the respondents fall into high category and have answered six or more questions correctly. From a total of 8.31% of the respondents fall 
in the moderate segment by having given three to five correct answers and just 1% of the respondents fall in the low basic literacy segment with the maximum score of just two correct answers. These are the results of advanced financial literacy. Uh, please needs. conclude now, please conclude. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So this is the conclusion and discussion. This paper attempt to evaluate the level of financial literacy knowledge and bring out its impact on financial well-being. The major finding of this study are that most of the respondents, 60% have a reasonable level of financial literacy. This is a positive sign. It is found that 80% of the respondents are well aware of basic literacy concept, such as simple interest, inflation, credit cards, and saving interest rate. Only 60% of the respondents are well aware of the advanced literacy concept such as long period returns, stock price fluctuations, risk return on stocks, bonds, and diversification. With respect to the relationship between financial literacy and financial behavior, it may be concluded that the results show a positive relationship between basic and advanced financial literacy and financial behavior. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. It was a good presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Namiji. Thank you. His next presentation is season number 40, Nandini Bharatwaj. Yes, Nandini Bharatwaj, please unmute. Yes, Nandini. Good evening to everyone. Today my topic is today my topic is challenges and opportunity during post-COVID-19 period. My screen is visible. Is my screen is visible to all? Yes, yes. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Um, introduction. COVID-19 affects all the society in the world. COVID-19 affects all the society in the world. Uh, come this... to the objective, please. The main objective of this paper is to find the challenges and opportunities during the COVID-19 time. In this time, uh, main challenges of the people, the uh, people faced by low or middle income group, reorienting the development or innovation. Reorienting development, the main objective is to uh, technology introduced on high scale literature view for this paper i review 25 paper with this help we find various result and conclusion in this paper the main study is to focus on the post covid 19 period with the literature view we find different result like those business are flexible they are survive at that time uh, other are faces losses. In this, people are mostly aware regarding the technology. The word follow technology like digitalization, like uh, the word are adopt all the method of the digitalization. Research method for, for this sorry for this study we use different type of research method like the sample method, survey method, or pre preliminary. Uh, method. With the help of this method, we find out the different types of challenges and opportunities faced in, for face after post-COVID-19 period. Challenges. Co COVID-19 create a different impact on the overall the society and the world. According to the sample method, some person are left by the company because uh, because in that, that because in that time uh, uh, no need of manpower. So because all the companies are shut down, they are all all works are done by in a, in home workspace. Uh, because uh, now a time businessmen use latest technology with these re uh, result manpower less COVID-19 uh, with the help of uh, COVID-19 uh, many people inflect uh, re reflect their income as a result inflation rate is increase or RBI increase their result like reserve uh, or repo rate reserve repo rate is also increased so people pay high rate of interest at this time less awareness of technology at the time of COVID-19 uh, the technology uh, mostly people are they go on for technology some people are have less knowledge regarding the technology during the time of COVID-19 all the things are to be changed and convert into the home workspace this is the biggest challenge and this time many people lo losing their job because the proper resources are not in the home as a result unemployment and uh, arise those people are unemployment at that time now a time they start their own venture as a study according to some study europe european people at that time lost their job or those people uh, don't please lost conclude. Their... okay sir 
these are the opportunities uh, i conclude these opportunities of post covid 19 uh, some opportunities are arise mostly all the world are go on digitalization with this help we are able to international trade easily or result according to use different study we find that those result are achieved before covid 19 now a time they are suffer huge loss after a covid 19 like restaurant and tourism according to nsi national statistical institution reform found that transportation and transport and uh, storage sector related to each other according to garewal at the al this is the uh, author please conclude now please conclude okay sir these are also the some results we find yeah, out conclusion yeah, yeah. at last we yeah. conclude that post covid 19 period people face many challenges and uh, opportunities uh, and many opportunities found with the help of uh, in technology many information many innovation are the uh, many information are done in this time which help to reduce cost and people are able to start new ventures and the technologies are grow fast at this time in this time mostly company uh, mostly company are making all the things all the platform are going digitalized digitalized but there is a one but there is a one difficult to arise because people are not aware uh, for the uh, thank you thank you we have seen the confusions uh, the only suggestion to you is that uh, the paper appears to be quite superficial you have to be very very specific and it, it must be data based instead of just uh, giving the general statements and please uh, please uh, uh, pay attention on the language part particularly okay. the there I understand that you being a new scholar, perhaps there might be. Yes, sir. There are some limitations, we know, but hope that in future we do well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Next presenter is forty-one Tinu Nand Kishore Ubale, research scholar from Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Yes, Tinu ji, please unmute. Thank you, Doctor Ravi Modi. Uh, I'll just share my presentation. Sir, are you able to view my presentation, sir? No, no, no. It's not it's coming. Perhaps, it is coming. Perhaps uh, it may take few seconds. Okay, now, sir. No, not yet. Share it again. I'm just giving. Yeah, share yeah. yeah. I'm just doing it again, sir. Cancel it and share it again. It's not coming. You can give the oral presentation because of the paucity of time. Uh, sorry, sir. Very sorry, sir. It is actually. Uh, I think, I, sir. I, uh, you can move to the next because I don't want to waste the time of the this. I will try my uh, in the next one, sir. No problem. Okay. 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 So Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Pick up his paper next uh, after next presentation. Next you can try again. You can try. Again. Yeah. No yeah, sir. I will just try again. Please give me one more chance. I will try. Till then, you can move to the next speaker, sir. Uh, okay. And your video is also stuck, so I think there is a network issue from your side. So you can yes, off sir. Yes, your sir. video. You can off your video, and then you can continue. I think it will be shared. Yes, the next presenter is Bajan Lal Ji, Freedom Number Forty Five, Assistant Professor from Kishangarh Ajmer. Yes, Bajan Lal Ji, please unmute. Please unmute. Bajan Lal Ji, I think is not ready. Thank <laughs> you. 
Your next presenter is serial number 48, Samrit Raghuvanshi. Samrit Raghuvanshi ji, PhD scholar from Jharkhand, Central University Jharkhand. Please unmute. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I am ready. Yeah, yeah. Please, please. You can continue. Uh, yes, sir. I am visible now and I am okay. sharing my screen. So is my uh, presentation visible? Visible. Visible. Yes, sir. Uh, very good evening to all, uh, sir. My, I am myself, Samrit Raghuvanshi, sir. I am a research scholar from Central University of Jharkhand, and my topic title is Nitty Gritty Details of Reverse Logistics in the Indian E-Commerce Industry. Uh, as we know, uh, when we talk about the introduction, ever since the, the advent of the e-commerce industry in India, it has seen a rapid, leech, a rapid leap and no one is untouched by the havoc of COVID-19, though uh, yes, to some they have brought to standstills and others are still uh, trying to manage it. The world has witnessed a massive surge in the online sales. And the Indian market is, has still not realized the drift of its foot potential, where everything is changing so swiftly and um, combined with uh, all the technologies with, in hand. One of these aspects is uh, that of reverse logistics, and it has emerged as an instrumental development within the broader supply chain functions. Uh, reverse logistics with the integration of blockchain technology has made things much easier and simpler for the organizations. I have used the word double-edged sword for the reverse logistics if we uh, don't uh, consider it uh, as an important uh, issue, then the companies can be a loss in uh, terms of uh, loyal customers and brand image, whereas one can, if uh, overdue uh, work, uh, uh, exempt their resources on maintaining the reverse logistics, then it can cause uh, uh, many issues uh, with the company where it can overburden with undesirable, uh, unwanted uh, cost for the company. So, sir, I have taken this, uh, there, this is uh, the retail e-commerce sales worldwide from 2020 to 20, um, from 2014 to 2023 from the business statista, uh, global business statista data, 20, uh, where you can see the, there is a rapid growth uh, of uh, e-commerce sales worldwide. Then I have uh, shown global reverse logistics market size 2020 to 2028 in billion US dollars. And this is also again taken from the business global data. data. Um, so sir, if um, I can only find uh, data from the uh, uh, global levels. Uh, there is, uh, I have done some literature reviews um, where uh, you can see dif different definitions are there. So some people have defined that, that uh, some are talking about books where 10 to 15 percent books are returned. Some are talking about computers and components where 10 to 18 percent are returned. Clothing up to 30 to 40 percent are returned. Mass consumption goods, 5 to 15 percent returns. But uh, there is no solid data as such. Uh, so, sir, the research gap is that there is an inadequate amount of contemporary research work available on the current reverse logistics trend uh, practices followed by the organization in the Indian e commerce. And market and challenges faced by them. There are few numbers of evidence to support the stakeholders, uh, though they are getting by getting affected by the reverse logistics activity in the performance of the supply chain management. This area is required to induce some lines for the future. As we know, different companies like Amazon, Flipkart, Mintra, Jabong, Snapdeal, and many more are uh, offering liberal policies of reverse um, re returning their uh, products and uh, getting a refund of uh, um, say 30 days, 15 days, 20 days. Uh, and in 2018, only um, Amazon uh, in US um, banned uh, many of their uh, customers as uh, they were seen as serial uh, customers or, or trying to return the products and getting a refund. Please come to the and, findings. Please come to the findings now. Uh, sir, uh, this is, these are the objectives of yeah. my study. Yeah. Um, reverse logistics practices, I'll try to explore what are the practices and then uh, how the reverse logistics is practiced in all barriers associated. Uh, to explore the factors affecting the reverse logistics and how they affect the supply chain management performance. So this is the research methodology. So this is a proposed research methodology, uh, research design where the exploratory and come descriptive sampling technique will be non-probability sampling, convenience sampling uh, will be used uh, to gather data through a self-administrated uh, structured scheduled questionnaire. Sampling frame will be stakeholders will choose randomly from Amazon, Flipkart, Mintra, Jabong and Snapdeal as their presence is much wider and uh, they are 
known uh, in the Indian market. Sampling area will be as per the requirement of the study. Uh, I have not decided as per yet. Um, um, data collection, both primary and secondary, the sampling size will be more than 400. So the methodology, I'll be using a triangular research design and the population for the study will entail distribution partners and online customers of the Indian market. And then our reliability test will be uh, run uh, to test the internal reliability of the items of the questionnaire based on the Cronbach alpha value and appropriate tools and techniques will be used to obtain the research objectives. I have tried to develop a conceptual framework where intensive interaction with stakeholders will be there. Uh, those are involved with the backward flow of the products, either with the distribution partners or the uh, customers. Uh, questionnaires will be conducted and uh, according to the sampling plan, the, the samples will be acquired and the analysis will be uh, opted carefully as per the need of the researcher. Uh, please come to the conclusions now. Uh, sir, uh, this is a proposed uh, uh, it is topic. Proposed, so, yeah, yes, so, sir. Thank you. I'll try to. I'll complete yeah. it soon, sir. Okay, fine. fine sir, fine. any insights? If uh, something to will be very helpful for it's, me, sir. Uh, it's 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 fine. Uh, the method that you are using is fine. Uh, but uh, just collect that data authentically and then like them. Good. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It was a wonderful presentation, Sandeep Thank you, sir. Next presenter, season number 53, Prasanta Ji. Prasanta Mujrai, Department of Geography, JJTU, Junjunu. Please unmute. Prasanta Ji, please unmute. Prasanta Mujrai, please unmute. Next presenter is at serial number 54, Sushila Chaudhary ji. Yes, Prasanta ji, yes. Yeah. Ah. Please continue. Sir, I, I have a uh, share my screen. You can share. Santaji, please continue. We don't have much time. Yes, sir. No, you are taking so much time, na? Yes, we can take, you can just do oral presentation. You can do oral presentation, don't worry. Uh, sir, uh, You can skip and do Ha, sir. Uh, I... Sir, my uh, topic is problems and uh, challenges in the environment of the law relating to the environment in India. I am a research scholar of JJT uh, University. My uh, main objectives of the study is to emphasize that the state and it's people are responsible for ensuring sustainable economic, social, and environmental development to determine whether economic and industrial development can be sustained only by ensuring social and environmental protection, to determine how the government of India's environmental protection measures should be designed and implemented, to emphasize allowing a higher quality of life, including recreational opportunities and national, uh, natural environment uh, that can support human settlements. So uh, my findings uh, or concluding remarks, at the federal and state level, we have passed more than uh, 200 pieces of legislation addressing environmental issues. It is more difficult to enforce law when there, is, there are more of them Comprehensive and fully integrated legislation is essential to enforcement of environmental protection regulation in India. 
as it is today this is insufficient to pass the law if these regulation are to be applied in the realistic timely and successful way all members of society must have a good attitude towards them the objectives of this of the environmental protection law have not been realized as a result the establishment of environmental court comprised of a uh, judge please, uh, don't read the paper just just uh, come to come to uh, the conclusion uh, uh, conclusion as a result the supreme court has mandated uh, mandated that environmental studies be included in all education grades from elementary school to college constitution uh, okay, needs we have to we have, just a minute don't read it we have seen uh, that your conclusion the very very general and vague you have to be very very specific for the purpose of writing research paper if you see your objectives they are too general and too vague which you cannot cover in a single paper thank you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you so much sushila choudhary ji please unmute serial number 54 sushila choudhary research scholar from hanumangarh shri kushal das university hanumangarh yes sushila ji please unmute ma'am ji 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 please continue Sushila ji, what happened? Some network problem is there again. No network problem, but she is not speaking anything. Sushila ji, are you there? Sushila ji, Sushila ji, ma'am, कुछ बोलिए तो सही, Sushila ji. Your camera is set. No problem. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, please, please speak, please. Good evening, all of you. My name is Sushila Chaudhary, research scholar, Shri Kushal Das University, Pili Bangal, Mangal, Rajasthan. My topic is attitude of teachers towards in service training programs for their skill developments. Introduction. Ah, uh, skip that. There is a good saying: "No one is perfect Madam, here, and no one." Avoid introduction. Be... Avoid introduction and some of the objectives and the findings. Okay, sir. Purpose and scope. This paper focus on teachers in order to understand the effects of trainings conducted by Diet Pekaner on professional development and skill improvement. Therefore, in addition to this. Border M, the key areas of focus included. First, to find out types of useful teaching skills. Second, to find out unsatisfied demand and developmental needs of teachers. Third, to find out the areas of greatest development need. Fourth, to find out the benefits of proper training programs among the teachers of Diet Pekaner region. and last one to explore the challenges of implementing proper training programs used by diet pekaner methodology 77 teachers who have attended the training programs of diet pekaner selected for sample of this survey study these teachers are selected on random basis from all the seven educational blocks of bekaner district these teachers included in the sample are working on the regular basis in elementary government schools of the district this study adopted the use of questionnaire instruments of collect primary data from the teachers of schools in bikaner the sampling approach made it easier to access all the targeted respondents data analysis the data analysis was conducted 
through a process from the according to the responses of the respondents their answer yes is coded one and no is coded as zero before feeding the data of excel sheets the half fill up questionnaires are put aside and not included in generating results according may 2015 data analysis begins from data cleaning coding input and analysis come to the conclusion madam yes sir conclusion the important Results. Results. The importance of teacher training programs has been proved appropriate in professional development of teachers as well as in administrating policies by the government. The findings of the study revealed that government got the opportunities through these training programs to design programs that could make teachers benefit from new skills and advancement. skills learned through the training programs helpful for teachers on the problem spots of their practical teaching at school or classrooms also teachers feel more confident for teaching by attending these trainings it is seen that training especially in increases the confidence level of teachers they become more satisfied for their profession due to yeah, the training programs again training programs help thank you ma'am thank you thank you ma'am thank you Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Serial number fifty-six, Doctor Deepankar Sharma, Assistant Professor from Manipal University. Yeah, please unmute. Yes, sir. Very good afternoon. Uh, very good evening, everybody. Uh, uh, let me just share the screen with uh, uh, you all so that it is visible. yes very good evening everybody and especially good evening to uh, our chair anil mehta ji uh, professor chiang chen ten and uh, ravikant ji uh, the topic of my presentation is impact of cartels and collusive activity in india and usa it is authored by me and my co-authored miss vinny kevlia now we all know what is car cartel cartel is basically a secretive form of association which tremendously impacts a market and it can be any market where the participants are actually trying to derive maximum advantage illegally now this research is quite significant from the prospect that india is a emerging market for many decades and we have been seeing and facing this problem of illicit collaborations between the so called competitors in the market and this secretive uh, type of business is continuously uh, going on because of two reasons number one we do not have a evidence number two we do not have any kind of clear impact analysis of their activity within the market now the scope of research is india and us jurisdiction the research objective one four number one impact of cartels number two the national and international framework for enforcement of laws number three the possible a counter of cartel is the leniency program where the participant themselves declare their were participant of a cartel and last what can be the modification in the proposed law in india the main problem or hypothesis is that the problem in india is bossy for us because our cartel enforcement mechanism is a doubtful proposition how it is doubtful i will prove with only one slide we all know what is cartel i have already discussed this that it is a type of association of producer seller distributor who illegally control the market and derive maximum advantage out of that now the question is what is the enforcement mechanism in india we have a competition act in us we have sherman act these two are the only laws which deal with cartels and this is the only provision in the law which deals the economic aspects of any crime or any activity which is undergoing in a market now why do we detect cartel or how can we detect cartel cartel can be detected only when we have a leniency program or leniency program in place why leniency because it will help somebody to come out and get immunity but the question is why will i come out five reasons only number 
high risk of detention number 2 if i am caught i will get harsh punishment number 3 transparency and predictability by the leniency giver and last and the most important the confidentiality which will be maintained i my name should not come out that i was the first person who disclosed this kind of scenario now what please is the now, in please india conclude it's a long yes i i'm just coming to the conclusion as yeah, i said yeah, why indian scenario is doubtful because in us we see application rate Two to four leniency problems per month in India. Just four cases in last ten years. So, what is my major suggestion? Number one, periodic review of definition of the cartel in India. Number two, criminalizing the cartelistic agreements. We do not have criminal provisions. We only have civil sanctions. Number three, inclusion of element of predictability. If I am the first applicant, I should get advantage of that. Number four, investigation technique should be more. comprehensive including economic tests number 5 codification of term vital disclosure what should i disclose to get this immunity and which will lead to detection of cartel and last the marker system whoever comes first second and third should get the advantages accordingly and then the law can work in that favor with this i conclude that eminent economists and jurists can effectively maintain the market and can make the indian economy a global power provided we catch on with the minus of cartelistic approaches within india and this particular presentation have also been shared with competition commission of india and they have acknowledged it and we are in the platform where we can discuss further amendments with them at their level thank you very much and i thank the inspire the association for providing me with this opportunity for sharing my research with all of you it was thank a you. good presentation and uh, the, the the way you presented was really impressive thank, thank you, you sir thank you very much and thank you to ravi kan ji also for giving me this opportunity thank you dipankar ji thank you so much the next presenter is at serial number 57 baiju thomas yes baiju thomas ji please unmute this is scholar yes. from west bengal okay Mr. Bejub, you can show your video also. Ah, okay, one minute. Yes. Okay, sir. It's not coming. Not coming. Yeah. do if you can give the verbal presentation okay now it is coming in huh? okay good evening yes, all, yes, all, all, of, all of you my topic is evaluation method ways of identifying the learning capabilities and learning performance of students with disability in inclusive classroom setting it is a thematic paper so i just just moving okay introduction Uh, it speaks about the uh, uh, evaluation methods uh, how the evaluation method will work with the children with the special needs and what is the importance and how we can evaluate the all things it speaks about uh, then the significance of evaluation uh, the term evaluation uh, is used to determine whether or not students are succeeding in their studies so the mainly uh, the program goals given the evaluation process and the evaluations are standard in almost every field you can see the every education and other fields also evaluations are used evaluation in education teachers and students are benefit from regular evaluation since they allow them to learn and grow so students from the classroom instruction by gaining knowledge and skills that may Used in their professional and personal life in the future. Evaluation. Come to the objective, please, and the major findings. Okay. Uh, mainly, uh, there are two types of evaluation I used in this. Uh, first one is uh, uh, formative evaluation, which we use in the beginning of the any course to find out uh, the how the child is uh, learning or not, how it is going on. so for the special children also we use the same method how the child is 
progressing in his studies. Then second method we use the summative method. At the end of the course, we use the evaluation method to find out the child is how he is able to learn the things or he is learned or he succeed in this program, in this course, what our course is undergoing. I'll come to the findings now. Uh, yes, conclusion. Uh, there are several methods uh, for evaluating an out, uh, outcome based evaluation, making decision, facilitate the discovery and implementation of remedies for securing weakness and gaps and loss. Okay. So teachers might use evaluation form to help them to enhance the teaching learning in an inclusive classroom setting. So this evaluation uh, methods will help the child to whatever difficulties he's finding and also he will be able to uh, overcome the difficulties. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a chance to share my Thank you. Thank you. Serial number 49, Sunupu Manoharji. Yes, please, please, please continue. Hello. Yeah. Hello, good evening, everyone. It gives me immense pleasure to stand before you and speak. Uh, my name is Sunupu Manohar, research scholar in the Department of Economics, Gulbarg University, Kalburgi, Karnataka, under the guidance of uh, Dr. Tumkunte Devidas. My topic is a review on the recent scenario of municipal solid waste management in Karnataka state. In the Karnataka state, there is a rapid pace of increasing population, economic growth, urbanization, and industrialization is coupled with accelerated solid waste generation. According to the policy, most of the urban local bodies in the state spent maximum portion of their overall budget for waste management on collection and transportation of solid waste. Often, less than 10% of budget is spent on treatment, processing, and final disposal of solid waste. Proper processing, including recycling facilities, do not exist in most urban local bodies in Karnataka, and therefore, majority of the waste is being taken to unscientific disposal sites for dumping the document stated. Objectives of the study, to understand environmental and health impacts of improper municipal solid waste management, to know recent scenario, municipal solid waste management in Karnataka state, and implementation of municipal solid waste management tools 2000 in Karnataka. Methodology, the study is based on secondary data. Data is collected from sources like working papers, journals, articles, internet and books, etc. The documentation of, sorry, the decomposition of waste into constituent chemicals is a common source of local environmental pollution. This problem is especially acute in developing nations. There are potential risks to environment and health from improper handling of solid waste direct health risk concern, mainly the workers in this field who can need to be protected Please as conclude. far as possible from contact with wastes. Please conclude now. Conclusion. Municipal solid waste management system in India is unsatisfactory. Although the economic condition of our country is poor, we have to handle the problem for the benefits of the whole public. According to my suggestions, Municipal corporations, they are working with the un, unproper, uh, unscientific, improper and uh, irregular of uh, collection of waste is the uh, due to uh, effect, an effect on the society for health diseases in the state. And uh, municipal corporations uh, not utilize their uh, financial resources which uh, provided by the central government. So this is the uh, major problems and uh, Corporation workers, they are not support properly to the uh, workers for uh, uh, collection of waste purpose. They are not uh, providing good level of uh, uh, tools and uh, technique uh, machines. Therefore, this is the problem faced by the workers for collection of waste purpose. So therefore, uh, state is not uh, improved for the clean city to keep it purpose. Thank you. Thank you, Sunupuji. Thank you. Next presenter is serial number 60, Pushpa Mehta Ji, Shudharthi, SKD University, Hanumangar, Rajasthan. Yes, Pushpa Mehta Ji, please unmute. 
यस मैम हाँ सभी का अभिनंदन स्पेशली डॉक्टर रविकांत जी डॉक्टर वैष्णव जी डॉक्टर अनिल जी मेहता आप सभी को अभिनंदन पुष्पा मेहता एस के डी यूनिवर्सिटी की विशेष स्कूलर मेरा विषय है महात्मा गांधी अंग्रेजी माध्यम विद्यालय में हिंदी माध्यम से प्रवेशित छात्रों की समस्याओं का अध्ययन भारत में इसकी प्रस्तावना में जो लाड मेकाले ने अपना स्मरण पद के द्वारा गवर्नर जनरल के परिषद के सम्मुख प्रस्तुत करके भारत में विलियम बैटिंग ने अंग्रेजी माध्यम की शिक्षा पर जोर देना प्रारंभ किया और वुड का डिस्प्ले जो भारत की शिक्षा का बंगना काटा कहा जाता है उसने भी अंग्रेजी माध्यम शिक्षा पर बल दिया उत्तरोत्तर अंग्रेजी माध्यम में भारत में शिक्षा पर वृद्धि होती गई और राजस्थान में अंग्रेजी माध्यम की शिक्षा सर्वप्रथम अजमेर के मेढवाड़ से प्रारंभ हुई अलवर के शासक बन्ने सिंह ने अलवर में प्रथम अंग्रेजी माध्यम विद्यालय की स्थापना की इसी और वर्तमान समय में जो हम देख रहे हैं कि निजी क्षेत्र में अंग्रेजी माध्यम विद्यालयों का अधिक के तरफ अभिभावकों में अधिक रुचि होने के कारण राजस्थान सरकार मुख्यमंत्री अशोक गहलोत व निदेशक महोदय माध्यमिक शिक्षा राजस्थान बीकानेर द्वारा शिवरा के माध्यमिक अंग्रेजी माध्यम उन्नीस सौ दिनांक सोलह छह दो के तहत राष्ट्रपिता महात्मा गांधी की एक सौ जयंती पर अंग्रेजी माध्यम के अंतर्गत महात्मा गांधी राजकीय विद्यालय की स्थापना की गई इसके अंतर्गत राजकीय क्षेत्र में प्रथम अंग्रेजी माध्यम विद्यालय जयपुर के मानसोर में जुलाई 2019 से प्रवेश प्रारंभ किया गया राजस्थान सरकार ने मैडम निष्कर्ष हाँ जी सर हाँ जी सर हाँ जी सर हाँ जी सर तो इसके लिए ना शोत के सर ऑब्जेक्टिव उद्देश्य बता रहे सर कि जो छात्र पूर्व में हिंदी माध्यम से जो वर्तमान में हिंदी माध्यम में विद्यालय संचालित किए जा रहे थे उन्हीं को अंग्रेजी माध्यम में परिवर्तित किया गया तो छात्रों को जिनमें पूर्व में हिंदी माध्यम से अध्ययनरत विद्यार्थियों की महात्मा गांधी अंग्रेजी माध्यम विद्यालय में प्रवेशित होने पर उनके द्वारा अनुभव की जाने वाली अध्ययन संबंधी समस्याओं का अध्ययन करना पूर्व में हिंदी माध्यम से अध्ययनरत विद्यार्थियों की महात्मा गांधी अंग्रेजी माध्यम विद्यालयों में प्रवेशित छात्रों द्वारा उनको मनोविज्ञानिक समस्याओं का अध्ययन करना और उन्हीं छात्रों की सामाजिक समायोजन से संबंधित समस्याओं का अध्ययन करना और इन समस्याओं का अध्ययन के साथ साथ उन समस्याओं के सुझाव समस्याओं के उपयुक्त सुझावों का भी प्रतिपादन करना मेरा अध्ययन का उद्देश्य रहा गया इस अध्ययन का परिसीमन के तहत मैंने बीकानेर जिले के छह ब्लॉक बीकानेर को लायक डूंगरगढ़ लोखा लोलखंड सर व खाजूवाला में संचालित महात्मा गांधी अंग्रेजी माध्यम विद्यालयों तक की सीमित रखा है और मेरा सैंपल इन अंग्रेजी माध्यम विद्यालयों के पांच पांच विद्यार्थी और विद्यार्थियों के साथ साथ उनके अभिभावकों का भी चयन किया गया इसके लिए मैंने सोच विधि के रूप में एक अपने खुद ने पर्सन निर्माण विधि का भी उपयोग किया सब निर्मित मैंने पर्सनावली तैयार की और साथ साथ सर्वेक्षण विधि का भी प्रयोग किया क्योंकि ये प्रथम बार अंग्रेजी माध्यम विद्यालय परिवर्तित किए गए राजस्थान सरकार में और शोध कार्य अति न्यून हुआ हुआ इस विषय के अंतर्गत और प्राथमिक स्तर के पांचवी और सातवीं क्लास के बच्चों को मैंने इसमें क्या था बस हाँ जी सर हाँ जी हाँ जी सर हाँ जी सर हाँ जी तो मेरा ये निष्कर्ष रहा कि निष्कर्ष रहा कि अंग्रेजी माध्यम में जो छात्र हिंदी माध्यम से अध्ययनरत है और सीधा डायरेक्ट कक्षा पांच या कक्षा सात में प्रवेश लेते हैं उनके साथ साथ अध्ययन संबंधी साथ साथ मनोविज्ञानिक सामाजिक समस्याओं को अनुभव की जाती है परिणाम को विद्यार्थी और भावक दोनों की दृष्टि से देखने से समान प्रकार के परिणाम प्रदर्शित होते हैं विद्यार्थियों द्वारा अध्ययन संबंधी समस्याओं का अनुभव होता है ये उनके व्यवहार में भी स्वाभाविक रूप से दृष्टिगत होता है जिसकी पुष्टि न केवल विद्यार्थी स्वयं करते हैं वरण इससे अभिभावक भी सहमति प्रकट करते हैं विद्यार्थियों की समस्याओं के केंद्र में अध्ययन संबंधी समस्याएं रहती है जिनसे वो मनोवैज्ञानिक व सामाजिक समस्याओं का भी अनुभव किया जाना स्वाभाविक होता है अध्ययन संबंधी समस्याओं में थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू पुष्पा जी थैंक यू प्रीति यादव जी यस प्रीति जी प्लीज प्लीज अनम्यूट प्रीति यादव जी रिसर्च स्कॉलर हैं ये काशी हिंदू विश्वविद्यालय वाराणसी जी प्रीति जी प्लीज यू कैन कंटिन्यू आप शेयर कर रही हैं स्क्रीन आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है थोड़ा सा तेज बोलिए प्लीज आवाज नहीं आ रही है आपकी लाउडर मेरा नाम प्रीति यादव है मैं बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी से हूँ कला इतिहास विभाग से शोध कर रही हूँ डॉक्टर कनुप्रिया मैम के अंडर में 
और मेरे शोध का विषय है कालिदास के ग्रंथों में जी आप म्यूट हो गई हैं आप दोबारा अनम्यूट कर लीजिए हाँ बोलिए बोलिए सर मेरा शोध का जो उद्देश्य है वो ये है कि श्रृंगारिक नायिकाओं की पुष्टि करके तथा उनके सचित्र रूपों के साथ साथ कालिदास के काव्य एवं नाट्य ग्रंथों पर आधारित राजस्थानी पारंपरिक कलाकारों की कृतियों में सौंदर्यात्मक पक्ष का विश्लेषण किया गया है श्रृंगारिक नायिकाओं को राजस्थान के कलाकारों द्वारा भिन्न भिन्न स्थितियों में चित्रित करने के लिए विविध रेखाओं रंगों रूपों एवं बनावट का प्रयोग किया गया है और सर इसमें मैंने प्राथमिक और द्वितीय स्रोत लिए हैं और इसका जो थोड़ा सा मैं सार बताना चाहूंगी भारतीय कला एवं साहित्य में कालिदास की रचनाओं की भूमिका उनकी विशिष्टता के द्योतक रहे हैं कालिदास एक महान कवि नाटककार कला एवं संगीत के पारखी भी थे जो उनकी रचनाओं में स्पष्ट रूप से दिखाई पड़ता है इन्होंने मुख्य रूप से सात ग्रंथों की रचना की जिनमें तीन नाट्य रचनाएं एवं चार काव्य ग्रंथ शामिल है जिसमें मुख्य नाट्य रचनाएं अज्ञान शाकुंतलम विक्रमोवर्षियम मालविकाग्निमित्रम हैं काव्य ग्रंथ के अंतर्गत ऋतु संहारम मेघदूतम एवं रघुवंशम है कालिदास के इन सभी ग्रंथों में नायिका के विभिन्न स्वरूप का अद्भुत संयोग झलकता है तथा अनेकों दशाओं का वर्णन परिलक्षित होता दिखाई पड़ता है यही कारण है कि चित्रकार प्रारंभ से ही कालिदास की सौंदर्य दृष्टि से प्रभावित रहा है और समय समय पर उनकी रचनाओं में वर्णित प्रसंगों को सौंदर्मयी रूप प्रदान करने की चेष्टा करता रहा है जो भारतीय जनमानस में अत्यंत लोकप्रिय हुए हैं मैं अपने इस शोध पत्र में कालिदास के ग्रंथों पर आधारित नायिका के श्रृंगारिक पक्ष पर कार्य कर कार्य कर रहे राजस्थान के कुछ महत्वपूर्ण कलाकार को ले रही हूं जैसे समंदर सिंह खंगारोद जो जयपुर से हैं वीरेन्द्र बन्नू जयपुर से शरद भारती उदयपुर से पवन कुमावत किशनगढ़ से जिन्होंने नायिका के सौंदर्य को अपनी दृष्टि से पारंपरिक माध्यम से अपने चित्रों में दर्शाया है जो कला प्रेमियों और शोधार्थियों के लिए विशेष स्थान रखेगी सर मैं कुछ इनके चित्र दिखाना चाहूंगी चित्र आप देख रहे स्किप कर सकती है समय क्या भाव है आप एक एक लाइन में एक पंक्ति में अपनी बात समाप्त करिएगा सर मेरा उद्देश्य यही रहा है ये शोध पद प्रस्तुत करने का क्योंकि अभी इन पे कार्य नहीं हुआ था मतलब एक संकलित कार्य जो होता है कालिदास के ग्रंथों पर जो राजस्थानी चित्रकार अपने चित्रों में किए हैं सर उन्हीं को मैं सभी उनके सारे चित्रों को लेना चाहूंगी इसमें और इसके चित्रों के माध्यम से चाहती है है एक एक दो, एक दो दो चित्र जी सर सर लेकिन मेरे से शेयर नहीं हो रहा चलिए फिर ठीक है आप आप सेंड कर दीजिएगा मेरे आईडी पे ठीक है ना जी सर बिल्कुल सर थैंक यू सर जी को भेज दीजिएगा सब चित्र इट वाज रियली अ गुड प्रेजेंटेशन बाय प्रीति यादव जी थैंक यू सर थैंक यू Somebody left for presentation, they can write in the chat box. एक presentation आपका रह गया था अभी आप आगे मेरे घर से एक presentation था ना last में जो आपका आया था Yes, Tinu वाले जी तो I think oh yeah, okay, you can this is your you can try yeah. uh, sir i will uh, not share the presentation maybe okay, because uh, we do the okay, oral so i will keep, i I, mm. i will give an oral, oral presentation no problem uh, yeah so i am grateful to professor anil mehta sir uh, dr ravi modi dr ss modi dr arti chopra and inspira for a wonderful uh, international conference uh, icmri i come to my title it's kya act kiya aapne bhi sorry boliye boliye uh, sir Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, my research title is "Student Startup Innovation Policy: Government of Gujarat and Overview." Okay, my my objective of uh, uh, of this studying this student startup innovation policy government of Gujarat is about the revolution it has created in the startup and innovation space through education in the state of Gujarat. Uh, basically, this will be an overview of the entire policy and its effect. in the education sector and the innovation and startup sphere second is to study the ssip resolution to study the existing ssip policy framework to understand the governance structure to study the participation of institutes and universities and to study the effect of the policy in a institute i have been i have personally been uh, the 
you know, I have taken advantage of this policy as a mentor of startup uh, SSIP. So I will be able to express my views in terms of the experience I have had since the policy has been implemented in Gujarat. The variables are key factors of SSIP, need of SSIP, perceived benefit of SSIP, perceived risk and implementation. My research design is based purely from the secondary data available and also my, my personal uh, overview experience, which I will be writing for the, uh, for the research paper. The conclusions will be key observations of the various aspects of SSIP policy for the government of Gujarat, including the preamble definitions, existing policy framework, Gujarat student innovation policy, implementation and deployment of policy, key facts of the policy, interventions, procedures, evaluations, and assessments. And I, I, will, be, uh, I, I will be giving an overview of its impact in the, on the students and the startup and innovation sphere in Gujarat. Uh, I'm grateful to uh, uh, Professor Anil Mehta, sir, for giving me a wonderful uh, structure in my last presentation also. And if uh, today also, if, if there is any uh, advice, I will be really happy to uh, implement it, sir. Thank you. It thank was, you. Thank you. Then, uh, we wish you could have seen your uh, presentation. Uh, yeah. It was a good and please, please carry and Hopefully, in the next uh, conference of Inspira, we will be able to see the final results. Uh, your thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Thank Ravi you. Modi, for giving me the opportunity, Dr. S. S. Modi and Dr. Arti Chopra. Thank you very much. Grateful. Thank sir. you, Dinuji. Thank you so much. And please, please send your presentation on on my mail ID, sir. Please. Thank you. Uh, is somebody left for presentation? Still, they can write in the chat box. We will give them chance. I think, sir, we have done all the presentations. They have presented in a very beautiful and professional manner, all the presenters. And now with the permission of chair, uh, I would like to invite Professor Tenser, the chairperson of today's technical session for his chairperson's remarks. Thank you, Professor Ravi Modi, and uh, thank you, uh, Anil, uh, Professor Anil Metat, uh, for this uh, uh, facilitation. Uh, it is it is indeed great presentations by all of you to, uh, in this uh, today's presentation. Today uh, presentations we have the themes, uh, which is uh, innovation, uh, innovative practices in social dimension, education, and also uh, social sciences. And we are seeing a lot of innovation, innovative ideas uh, being presented today. Uh, about the fact that, uh, you know, despite the fact that, uh, so, well, we still may have uh, some uh, empirical journey to go, but we, we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, social, uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, innovative uh, themes and variables being suggested, such as healthy, healthy, if I can recall, healthy uh, selfishness. Uh, you know, to us, the selfishness is something very much in a negative tone, uh, connotations, but I, uh, our presenters uh, have uh, uh, present, has, has brought uh, a very innovative novelistic uh, perspective in selfishness in the sense of uh, having his uh, one's own boundary and, and not harming others. So in a way, it is, it is, it is uh, really indicating uh, some sort of uh, you know, uh, pres preservation of certain principles and philosophies and, and not easily uh, giving in. Uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, we, if you do, if each of us, uh, by the, by, uh, by the fact of uh, being innovation, innovative in, in our thinking processes and in the themes that we suggest, we can also uh, explore more uh, literature review, uh, such as the selfishness we can, uh, from, from what uh, was defined, uh, the definitions, we can also uh, look into various different types of terms in our uh, literature, in our literature uh, searching, and uh, that would give us an expensive, uh, an expansion, an expensive uh, 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 cognition uh, uh, map, cognitive maps of, uh, you know, what, uh, what kind of concepts are available uh, so that we can 
we can better uh, understand uh, uh, a research issue. So to do a good job, uh, we have seen from today is that uh, you know we 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 need to do a good job in literature review. Uh, literature reviews like uh, what I have just explained uh, with the examples of the healthy selfishness, uh, we can we can uh, expand and really uh, get an in-depth understanding. Um, and then it comes into the next thing is we really have to uh, put focus in uh, empirical uh, primary uh, uh, in data collection. Uh, secondary is good because it provides us the trend, it provides us some direction, and it gives us some observation, and it, uh, and, you know, and it leads us to certain uh, uh, exploration, explorations. But uh, uh, primary is always uh, important because it is, it is our own judgment, it is our own uh, discovery, it is our own uh, uh, thought, uh, thought uh, uh, induced uh, effort. Uh, that 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 is aligned with what Professor uh, Anil Meta is always uh, asking. Uh, what what exactly is our research objective, and how have we addressed our research objective? And uh, primary data uh, has this uh, uh, a very important implication uh, that we can that is not only aligning with the research objective but the research objective that is very 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 meaningful to uh, to the societies like uh, uh, Professor Arti Chopra has already conveyed and summarized reiterated many many times uh, that uh, social uh, you know al al alignment uh, aligning aligning our research objectives with the with the uh, with the broader social context which is really the implication it's very 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 important so today again I, I, from witnessing your all of your presentations I'm really really seeing like uh, what professors Anil Metas and uh, professors Ravi Modi has already, uh, mentioned that uh, that our qualities of presentation has already significantly improved, uh, and I think that is uh, that is what we can uh, we we are see uh, that we can imply that we are really uh, you know uh, the 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 Inspira Association Research uh, Research Association has already um, uh, you know, make his objective uh, uh, successful in the sense of being able to influence each other's uh, and create an atmosphere uh, that instill inspiration and instill uh, efforts, uh, continuing effort from all sides uh, to uh, continue to uh, uh, make uh, a good understanding and apply rigorous research effort. Uh, partly uh, driven by these international conferences and partly uh, driven by the workshop, uh, which I have witnessed from uh, uh, the Inspira uh, uh, organizing the workshop. Like Professor Ravi Modi has said, uh, uh, lastly, uh, well, coming to the end of my observation today, uh, like Professor uh, Ravi Modi had said, which is, uh, uh, we open up to everyone to make presentation. Uh, so Inspira has a very, very uh, a touristic, uh, uh, um, uh, the, you know, the big heart to embrace everyone to come here and do presentation. Now through the presentation, through the presentation, uh, for example, using social learning theory, uh, you know, it creates and it provides an atmosphere, social environment where we can learn from each other. We can observe other people's learning, we are other people's presentation. We can see how they present their objective, their background, uh, you know, their empirical finding and, and how they draw conclusion and how they uh, uh, provide implication uh, that can lead them to the next stage of uh, research exploration. And so all this, all this, we are, uh, we are, the, we come here for, and and we all have done it, and including myself. So uh, each time we come, we learn, I learn, and uh, you know, and also trans uh, transmit uh, all this uh, learning to my students and all my colleagues in uh, Thailand, for instance, and uh, motivate them. 
And in fact, I also motivate back to the India uh, through because I have uh, uh, friends and uh, uh, colleagues in India. And so in regularly in our uh, conferences, uh, we, we share. And, and uh, so when I uh, better understand the India context, I, I would uh, better able to interact uh, in a meaningful way in a contextually uh, uh, meaningful and uh, relating related way uh, back to India. And so our relationship grow and our understanding grow and our research quality grow and our uh, hitting to the point straightforward uh, becomes clear. And so again, thank you very much uh, uh, all of you uh, for making a very good effort. Thank you. And back to Professor Ravi Modi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Tensor, for your wonderful chairperson's remarks. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, uh, first of all, I would like to request everybody to please open up the videos because it is the time to announce the Inspire Excellence Awards and Best Paper Presentation Awards so, so that we can take some screenshots also. And with the permission of Chair, I would like to invite Dr. Arti Chopra, Joint Secretary, Inspira Research Association, to announce Inspira Academic Excellence Awards May 2022 and Best Paper Presentation Awards for Technical Session Day 1, that is yesterday, May 28th, 2022, yesterday's session. So, Dr. Arti, ma'am, over to you. Please unmute. Yeah. Good evening. <laughs> a very good evening once again. <laughs> In this international conference on multidisciplinary research and innovations in finance and strategic management, business economics, education, humanities and social sciences being jointly organized by Chandragupta Institute of Management, Patna Bihar, along with Inspira Research Association, IRA Jaipur, I thank the organizing secretary, Captain Dr. Ravi Kant Modi, to bestow me the privilege, pleasure, and the delight to declare the Inspira Excellence Awards. Inspira Research Association, as you know, has been according and awarding the great personalities in the fields of research and academics. As you all know that when we recognize someone's efforts, it results in electrifying the spirit of a person and the person tries to achieve more and more. In this series, today I'm excited to announce the awards in three categories and then the awards for best paper presentation for the day one, that is 28th of May, 2022. As the president of Inspira Research Association, Professor S.S. Modi sir mentioned in his welcome address, that Inspira Research Association is a registered organization which is meant for the promotion of multidisciplinary research and academics with its varied activities like FDPs, MDPs, international seminars, conferences, hands-on workshops, motivational sessions, and the journals of high repute. So now I come back to the awards. This time we had received 22 CVs for the nomination and out of you, uh, the, uh, those 22 CVs, our jury found three of them appropriate to be set in our categories. So we come to the categories. The first category of Inspira Excellence Awards is Best Scholar Award. And the Best Scholar Award goes to Dr. S. Mahesh Kannan. Dr. S. Mahesh Kannan, if you are there in the conference right now, you can just raise your hand or just say something so that we get to know that yeah, I think Dr. He, Mahesh. He is in the meeting. Okay. Dr. S. Mahesh Kannan, please, can you start your video? Can you open up your video? So, Dr. Mahesh. Yeah, yeah, you can okay. continue. He is here. Is, uh, Okay, so Dr. S. Mahesh Kanan, I would like to say something about him. 
He is working as an assistant professor, PG and research department of cooperation, Sri Ramakrishna Mission Vidyalaya College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. He has been awarded his PhD degree in state cooperative banks in India. He has attended around 30 faculty development programs on various contemporary themes. Dr. Mahesh Kannan is the member of Board of Studies, Department of Cooperation, DB Jain College, Chennai, and SRMV College, Coimbatore. He has been the member of Expert Committee at District Employment Office, Chennai, and Coimbatore. He has been the convener of various bodies and committees including NAC, IQAC, ERP, Bridge Forces, and many more. Dr. S. Mahesh Kannan has been the chair and resource person in many seminars. He has received awards like Dedicated Teaching Professional National Award. He has published eight books, uh, many chapters, 12 research papers, and attended around 60 national and international conferences. Congratulations to Dr. S. Mahesh Kannan. Congratulations for receiving the award that is the best scholar award. A big round of applause for Dr. S. Mahesh Kannan. Now, I move towards the second category that is the best woman researcher award. Yesterday only Professor Mamta Jain discussed about the role of women and women empowerment. So see how beautifully women are doing in academics and research. By this category, we get to know this. So the best woman researcher award, the award goes to Dr. Dipali Jain. So Dr. Dipali Jain, if you're there in the meeting, please turn on your camera so that we can see you. We can see you, ma'am. <laughs> congratulations, yeah, congratulations, congratulations, ma'am. Congratulations, ma congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Dr. Dipali Jain is presently working as an associate professor in the Department of Commerce, Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar College, University of Delhi. She is Master's in Commerce from Delhi University, MPhil from Delhi School of Economics, and Doctorate in Finance from Jamia Milia Isma Islamia Delhi. Dr. Dipali also holds Intermediate Examination Certificate of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and Institute of Cost and Management Accountants of India. Dr. Dipali has presented research papers at various seminars and conferences. Her research paper presented at All India Accounting Conference and International Seminar organized by Indian Accounting Association, that is Delhi chapter in association with the Department of Commerce, University of Delhi, and Sri Ram College of Commerce was awarded the Best Paper Award. She has attended many faculty development programs in, on various themes and especially on banking and finance services organized by Institute of Lifelong Learning, University of Delhi, which, are, which was in collaboration with ICICI Bank. She has about more than 20 years of teaching and research experience. Her areas of specialization are accounting, finance, and management that we can get to know from her degrees also. She's intermediate CA also, as you got to know. She presented a paper on digital marketing strategy that was awarded the best paper award at sixth international conference on disruptive innovation and digital transformation in business and management organized by Jamnalal Bajaj Institute of Management and Research in association with Jakir Hussain Delhi College, University of Delhi. A heartiest congratulations, congratulations to you, Dr. Dipali Jain, ma'am, and congratulations for so many awards. Congratulations. Thanks. One Thanks more added to your CV now. <laughs> Thanks a lot for uh, so much good. You, you have so appreciated, but I you, also you thanks a lot it, for appreciating my work and honor me so prestigious award. I extend my thanks also to all the organizing committee member. Um, really, this conference is highly informative and educative, and 
really enrich our knowledge and also um, uh, give us a uh, uh, really motivate us to participate in all these types of uh, uh, conferences thank you very much thanks a lot ma'am thanks thank you dr nepali thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ma'am i want to say that it is all because of active participants like you that this conference becomes a success if there are no participants obviously exactly. the participants are so active from all over the nation thank you so much we also learn so much from you ma'am thank you yeah. thanks a lot thank yeah all, all on a learning uh, stage thank, thank you. you thank you ma'am now we move towards the third category that is the young researcher award and the awardee of the young researcher award is dr dipankar sharma dr dipankar sharma if you are there uh, in the meeting right now please uh, turn on your video so that we can see you here yeah he's here he's here okay dipankar ji congratulations thank you thank you very much congratulations dipankar ji thank you thank you sir thank you sir you, you spoke very well i i heard your presentation also that was very nice Thank so, you. Dr. Dipankar Sharma is the assistant professor of law at Senior Skill in the School of Law at Manipal University, Jaipur. He has previously worked at National Law University and taught at both UG and PG levels for many years. He has been invited at several occasions in India and outside India to various international conferences to present his research. in the field of economics finance competition law and he has many publications on the same he has guided 25 llm dissertations under his able mentorship dr dipankar sharma has been attached in various capacities to other universities like city university of london and university of hong kong he has published three major textbooks from reputed publishers like central law publication eastern book company and satyam law international covering the areas like corporate governance commercial laws and competitions laws he has multiple publications in renowned journals like european competition law review and brits law journal dr dipankar has been invited to present his views on the current comparative approaches of law at the platforms like asian law institute competition commission of singapore national law university university of rajasthan asian law and economics association asian competition forum national and state legal services association i think no place has been left where sir has gone to deliver his sessions on law academically he has participated as a speaker in more than 45 international and national conferences he has published more than 18 research papers in international journals he has successfully completed more than 65 certificate courses from international organizations like un world bank unicef and many leading universities of the world not only this Dr Dipankar was appointed as the in an invited as the visiting scholar at City University of London for research and delivering a workshop lecture in the field of comparative competition and economic law he has been associated as an international editorial council member with brits law journal that is the scopus index journal and not only this he was the sole indian academician to be invited as paper presenter and have been invited to deliver lecture in uh, commission of south africa and ministry of finance and foreign affairs government of south africa a very very congratulations to uh, dr dipankar sharma uh, mm -hmm. he has got many national and international patents as well so beautiful sir your profile is very very impressive congratulations to you for uh, being awarded as a young researcher award from inspira excellence awards thank you congratulations congratulations sir if you wish to say something for a minute <laughs> thank you so very much for this uh, wonderful presentation and the biography which you have read out for me uh, though it is very difficult to listen about yourself in front of yourself 
but uh, i am very grateful to the organization to uh, dr avikan ji to professor ss modi ji and as well as professor anil mehta ji and chai cheng ji and if i can recall it properly i had a good interaction with professor anil mehta ji also when he was there with vanasthali uh, and uh, i was there at that conference and uh, in, in fact uh, we had discussed about the situations of gender neutrality and other aspects in that particular scenario yes, so yes. i am very thankful Yes, uh, so I'm very thankful for this uh, wonderful uh, award which you have bestowed upon me, and I look forward for a continuous and more intellectual association with the organization as well. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, thank you. sir! I had to cut down your CV because we had limited time. So, so many other things are also there in your profile. Congratulations! Thank sir. you, thank you very much. So now. we move towards the all together another category of awards that is the best paper presentation awards for day 1 of the conference that is 28th of may 2022 so i uh, will start with the third position as you know that inspira uh, keeps the award on all three positions and all three positions have two awards each so we start with the third position for day 1 technical session 1 third prize the first awardee on the third position is uh, shrimati dehuti banchor uh, shodarthi kalyan snatkottar mahavidyalay bhilai aur inka vishay tha kuposhan ke star mein kami lane mein mahila evam bal vikas vibhag ka yogdan ka vishleshatmak adhyayan shrimati dehuti banchor congratulations ma'am the second awardee on the third position is ma'am bala usha shri who is research scholar at sanskriti university mathura uttar pradesh and her topic was a study of factor influencing job satisfaction among the bpo employees in hyderabad ma'am bala usha shri heartiest congratulations ma'am keep applauding for the awardees <laughs> now we move towards the second position the first awardee on the second position is uh, that uh, that was uh, by three uh, that was a joint uh, paper by three authors miss somya p miss rebashi a and miss tharani m miss somya miss rebashi and miss tharani they are the students of kumar guru college of technology coimbatore tamil nadu and their topic was a study on perception of covid vaccine among economically weaker section of the society in coimbatore city congratulations to miss somya and her team now the second awardee on the second position is mr parvez ulla mr parvez ulla is assistant professor department of commerce Swami Vivekanand Rural First Grade College, Chandapura, Bangalore, Karnataka. Mr. Parvez Ulla, congratulations, sir. The topic of Mr. Parvez Ulla was effectiveness of forensic accounting in banking sector, accounting professionals' perception. Congratulations, sir. And now we move towards the first position. The first position, uh, the award is being given to uh, the first person. uh which is miss sunita l miss sunita l is assistant professor at department of commerce swami vivekanand rural first grade college bangalore karnataka miss sunita's topic was financial inclusion and economic growth in india a study on modi's government's initiatives congratulations miss sunita and the second awardee on the first position is ma'am sandeepthi robert Ma'am Sandeepthi Robert is a research scholar in the Department of Studies, Department of Studies and Research in Business Administration, VSK University, Karnataka. Ma'am Sandeepthi Robert. Her topic was: Does foreign direct investment growth is significant in Indian computer software and hardware sector? So, congratulations to all the winners of day one. 
and for announcing the awards of day two, I would request Captain Dr. Ravi Kant Modi, General Secretary, Inspira Research Association, to please declare the awards for day two, that is today. Before uh, giving it to uh, Dr. Ravi Kant Modi, sir, I would just like to say one more thing. Uh, Professor Chai Chin Tan, sir, said that he has many friends over here in India. So he may count us also in his friend list now. And whenever you visit to India next, it is for sure that you will visit us and you'll meet us also. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much, Professor Anil Mehta, sir, for analyzing all the papers with so much of patience and uh, so beautifully you analyzed. Now over to Captain Dr. Ravi Kant Modi, sir, for announcing the awards for today's session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Arti Chopra for announcement of Inspire Excellence Awards and Best Paper Presentation Awards in a very beautiful manner. And ma'am, being a Joint Secretary of Inspira, I also thank you for your, for your warm welcome and thanks to our guest also. So thanks to uh, Dr. Arti Chopra once again. Thank you so much, ma'am. <laughs> so now uh, it is my duty to announce Best Paper Presentation Awards for today's technical session. And uh, as you know that there are uh, 64 presenters. So with the permission of uh, chair, <coughs> we have decided to give three awards on each position. So I'm starting from third position. The first awardee on third position is Susmita PS, Assistant Professor, SNM Training College, Kerala. And her topic was relationship between societal ideation and physical interpersonal academic and environmental factors of students stress among adolescents. So congratulations to Susmita PS. The second awardee on third position is Navneet Kaur, Ms. Navneet Kaur, research scholar, GNA University, Punjab. And her topic was financial literacy and financial behavior among individual and analysis. The third awardee on third position is Preeti Yadav. Preeti Yadav, Shod Shatra, Kala Atihas Vibhag, Kashi Hindu Vishwidale, Varanasi. Because we want to promote Hindi presenters also here. So it was a very good presentation, Preeti ji. Now moving on to the second position. The first awardee on second position is Grisha Chopra, Grisha Chopra, student, Department of Psychology, IAS University, Jaipur. And the topic was revisiting female infer inferiority, the impact of gender stereotype and malicious envy on dependency. Congratulations to Grisha ji. The second awardee on second position is Dr. Soni Keval Ramani, Assistant Professor, MIT University, Uttar Pradesh, and her topic was Dark Emotional Intelligence. The third awardee on second position is Meghna Mittal, Research Scholar, Department of Psychology, IAS University, and her topic was Aspiration and Self-Handicapping Behavior via Sense of Coherence among School Students. So congratulations to all of them. Now moving on to the first position. The first awardee on first position is Dr. Poonam Mittal. Dr. Poonam Mittal, Associate Professor, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar College, University of Delhi. And the topic was a study of the top three Indian cosmetic industries. Congratulations, Dr. Poonam. The Second position on the the second uh, awardee on the first position is Ms. Sakshi Gupta. Ms. Sakshi Gupta, research scholar, Dune University, Dehradun, Uttarakhand, and her topic was psychological contract, employee commitment, and organizational citizenship behavior at workplace: a study of higher education teachers in Uttarakhand. And the third awardee on first position is. Dr. Dipanka Sharma, Assistant Professor of Law, Manipal University, Rajasthan. And the topic was Impact of Cartels and Collusive Activity in India and USA. So congratulations to all of you. 
congratulations congratulations all of you once again and now i would like to invite professor dr anil mehta vice president inspire research association and professor of management and uh, management and a school of legal studies banasthali university banasthali for delivering vote of thanks on behalf of inspire research association and cimp patna professor anil mehta sir thank you am i audible ravi ji yes sir yes yeah ah uh, thank you very much uh, dr ravi kan modi to assign me a very pleasant duty of moving vote of thanks on behalf of both the institution chandragupta institute as well as from inspira association in fact uh, this two day international conference on multidisciplinary research and innovation in finance and strategic management business economics education humanities and social sciences date 28th and 29th of may i think i need not have to comment about the conference the great success very overwhelming response by all the participants in fact the theme was innovation and uh, the way participants have presented the papers and some of the presentations were on so innovative and creative topics that it was a great learning experience for each and every one I, i believe that everyone has learned out of these two days conference of course the list is very long but uh, i'll try to be as brief as possible in moving the vote of thanks to begin with i am really grateful to our today's chairperson dr chai cheng ten in fact uh, he is so sincere not only he has listened every presentation so carefully but that at the end of the presentation he crafted his presidential remark so beautifully that in a very short span of time he summed up and gave wonderful piece of advice to every participant in fact dr chai chen tang is our good friend and as dr arti chopra has mentioned that whenever he will be in india we all are looking from inspira to meet him whether he comes to jaipur or not i'm thankful to our keynote you know, speaker for today ankelda lulaj from europe for her very good keynote address in fact uh, she has explained the present scenario and the innovative strategies very well i am thankful to our other keynote speaker and our young friend dr amal wasita i am really happy to see dr wasita because uh, i belong to the same department from which dr wasita is nowadays a functioning department of business administration university of rajasthan dr wasita has very well covered different dimensions of new education policy and as dr arti has mentioned that whatever he spoke he is trying to introduce in his college as well as in the university of rajasthan thank you dr amal wasita for your wonderful keynote address we are really grateful to professor ajay kumar singh who has inaugurated this conference yesterday the former vice chancellor of shri shri university and professor head and dean of faculty of commerce and business delhi school of economics university of delhi in fact his credential itself is 
very, very inspiring to all young academicians and researchers. I'm thankful to yesterday's keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Dex Suranga Salva, who has very well narrated the current state of affairs in Sri Lanka and the significance of India in resolving the Sri Lankan problem. I'm thankful to Professor Dr. Mamta Jain, Professor and Chairman of BOS, EFM, Department of Economic Administration, University of Rajasthan, for elaborating the women empowerment and other related issues very lucidly. We are extremely grateful to Professor Rana Singh, Director, Chandragupta Institute of Management, who has collaborated with Inspiration Association for organizing this international conference. In fact, uh, Dr. Rana Singh is always very kind enough who extend his support to our association very generously, be in the form of uh, chairing many sessions or to act as a uh, key speaker. But this time, he has collaborated with us from Patna. Thank you, Professor Rana Singh, for your very generous and very crucial support. I am thankful to Professor Dr. Rajiv Ranjan and Dr. Kumat Kumar for their valuable contribution in making this conference a grand success. Dr. Aarti Chopra, Joint Secretary of Inspiration Association. I am falling short of words to praise Dr. Aarti Chopra. She is so sincere, so committed, so dedicated that it is very difficult, dear Aarti, what you have contributed for this novel cause of uh, uh, developing the young researcher and contributing in Inspira Research Association's activities. You are an excellent orator and perhaps you have been the source of inspiration for many, many participants. I'm really grateful to Dr. Ravi Kant Modi, our very young, general, uh, very, very enthusiastic uh, General Secretary of Israel Association, who takes keen interest and takes so much of pain in organizing all this conference. In fact, I know it very well that how much it is uh, uh, taxing to organizing any international conference like this. In fact, prior to conference and the post-conference activities are so uh, uh, time-consuming and uh, it requires sort of a lot of uh, pains and a lot of words. Thank you, Dr. Abhikant Modi, for your valuable contribution to the Inspira. Thanks, sir. Thanks for your blessings. Thank you. Last but not least, we are extremely grateful to Dr. SS Modi, the conference organizing director and president of the association. In fact, he is the mentor for the entire Inspira team. In fact, without SS Modi, perhaps uh, Inspira wouldn't have taken this shape which it has taken today. And we need your blessings. We need your guidance always. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor SS Modi. Last but not least, I'm thankful from the core of my heart to each and every participant of this mega con international conference. In fact, dear participants, without your support, without your active participation, without your contribution in the form of valued papers, perhaps uh, this conference would have been, uh, wouldn't have been successful. So thank you. Thank you very much. Today's presentations were also very good. Of course, uh, some of the researchers were quite new in the field of research, but uh, I can see the enthusiasm, the hard work, and I'm quite sure that this conference will further inspire you to improve, to excel. So once again, thanks. Thanks a lot 
to each and every person who has directly or indirectly contributed in making this Inspira International Conference a grand success. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. Okta to Dr. Ravi Kant Modi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Mehta, sir, for excellent delivery of word of thanks, sir. Thank you so much once again to today's chairperson, Professor Chaichington, sir, additional chairperson, Professor Mehta, sir, our keynote speakers, Professor Ankleda Lulas and Professor ML Vasita, sir, all the learned participants, all the presenters. Uh, congratulations to all the awardees, best paper presentation awardees, Inspira Excellence Awards awardees. Thanks to my uh, backbone, Dr. Arti Ma'am, Dr. Arti Chopra. I'm lucky to have her in my team. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. And thanks to all the participants once again. And uh, uh, as uh, it is my duty to announce uh, our next event, because we are organizing conferences every month to motivate the scholars, students, and teachers. So we are going to organize one more multidisciplinary conference in the collaboration with Apex University, Jaipur, in the month of June uh, 25th and 26th, 2022. And there will be, again, an opportunity to publish papers in peer-reviewed journals, ISBN edited books, and e-conference proceedings with ISBN. And also, many awards like this will be announced. So uh, the brochure will be shared soon to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And if, if any query, you can call me, you can WhatsApp me. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Arti Good night, Man. everyone. Good, Good, night. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Dr. Chai Ching Teng. Good night, everyone. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.